It's too many tabs. We're here. Get ready. Be excited. It's a book club <laughs> episode. I didn't think you were going to do it verbatim, but I love it. Do you think that's good? Yeah. All right, let's get. Let's just hit the theme. Too many frauds and too many scammers that we wish weren't real. Too many cons and too many spammers and we're starting to feel like we got too many tabs open. Too many tabs. Remember to smile. We're here. We're here. We're awake. Yeah, are we? I'm. You are. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am functioning. What happened last night? Listen, the, the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection came out. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I started playing it. And yep. I know a lot of nerds are complaining about it online because they're like, it's not, it's not, shut up. Yeah. The real problem with the game is when I press play on the game, it doesn't automatically become 2006. Mm-hmm, my mm-hmm. knees don't stop hurting. Yep. Uh, my hairline doesn't return. Okay. Rent is not $425. Oh, crushing. You know, there's so many things like that. Yeah. Uh, where, and I just, I just kept playing it. Yeah. I just kept playing it. And then I stayed you didn't up, go to sleep. I stayed up way too late. Yeah. And I made a promise to you that we'd get up early on a Sunday morning and record this episode. <laughs> yep. So we could possibly see an Easter bunny later. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know if we're going to survive I this think, podcast. I think I'm going to crawl back into bed. <laughs> Wake me up when September house ends. Wow. That was a good segue. Thank you I'm so much. I'm really proud of you. I know. I've been uh, sitting on that joke for three days. <laughs> but the second I saw the cover of this book. But before we get started on okay. that, we do just want to say to all of our listeners, thank you guys so much for continuing to listen to us. Thank you to all of our Patreons who have joined at... Uh, Patri- uh, Pearlmania500.net or mm. patreon.com slash Pearlmania500. Uh, we thank everyone who has been supporting the show. Uh, because of you guys, we've been able to uh, wake up early on days like this and just annoy the shit out of each other. <laughs> it's good for our relationship. It really is. How close are we to Akatar? Uh, we are still about 75 away. 75. Listen. 75 more patrons, and I will read that Listen to dirty, me. horny fairy book. Friends foes people that listen because they don't like us and people that listen because they do share this podcast with your friends and your enemies let's meet this goal let's make him read this book share it with your friends to enemies lovers arc perfect see you're yeah, ready for book club you I, are here i am very ready for book club. that coffee is kicking in it's it's a uh, it's an iced coffee uh-huh. all right i've had i'm on my second thing of mio yep for those of you guys who don't know, I'm powered by Mio Energy. That is not <laughs> a sponsorship. I don't even love it. It's no. just the thing that tastes the least bad. <laughs> um, speaking of least bad, uh-huh. please rate us on iTunes. <laughs> oh, God. You're super good at these call I'm, to actions. Listen, I am so good. Because at, you can barely be called to action right now. I am. The, the call to action <laughs> I got sounded like the cry in Dune. <laughs> that was you waking me up this morning with the baby. I was just like, all of a sudden I just heard this noise. I'm like, I don't know. I was like, what is happening? You're like, it's time to record a book club. I said, wake up. We got to do a podcast. And I was like, okay. Okay, so listen. This is a book club episode. Yes. The way the book club episodes go for those that are new listeners, because I know we have new listeners. Well, we I've new seen listeners. the stats. Yep. Um, book clubs are when I read a book, um, I, I then try to explain the book to Alex. This is born out of a thing that usually happens in our life, generally, where every time I finish a book, I turn to him, usually in bed, and I go, I got to explain this entire book to you as quickly as possible, and then watch his reactions, because he doesn't normally read fiction books, which is why the Akatar thing is so funny, because he's not a fiction girly. I'm not. No, I am. And I'm specifically a horror fiction girly. I love a horror. I love a thriller. I like uh, the ookie spookies. Okay? And I, I don't like them either. No, he doesn't like that either. So really, uh, this isn't his favorite thing, and it's mine, because I'm going to torture him with the thing that brings me joy, which is ookie spooky scary books. Yeah, that's very, very true. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, we've been through a lot. If you go back to our older episodes, you may notice, be like, hey, why is there a weird merman as the old symbol before you got this really cool new symbol with the whole everything's linked together Because image. we did a book about evil mermaids. It was yeah. great. It's a great episode. It was a great episode, and it was a running joke on the podcast for a very long um, time. So It's called Into the Deep. You should listen to that one. But so listen, I just want to warn everybody for the yep. news. Yep. The news. I'm going to spoil the shit out of this book. Yep. So if you want to read this book and you haven't read it yet, I maybe bookmark this episode. Come back after you read it. 
if you're down to just listen to a silly story. Down to clown. Down you to don't clown. have to have read the book for this to be fun. Oh, no. Because I, I have not read the book. And he's going to have a great time, whether uh-huh. he likes it or not. Okay. <laughs> so let's. you want to get started? Yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up a new tab here real okay. quick. And then when we come back uh, after this, we will hear all about the September house. Uh, for those of you who don't want to hear an ad, you can always join us. Patreon.com slash Pearlmania500 or Pearlmania500.net. Also, just real quick, I should remember to, I got to remember to plug them. Mm-hmm. I have show tickets oh, April right. 12th and 13th yep. um, in Philadelphia, and then we'll be announcing the rest of the tour soon. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and hit that first pay, uh, new tab. Page turn. <laughs> I don't bumper. <laughs> Mrs. P. We're back. I'm ready. Okay. So this book is called The September House. Okay. It's by Carissa Orlando. Okay. And I got to say, I really enjoyed this book. I'm also going to say that I wish it ended a little differently. I have some thoughts about the ending. Okay. But in general, I really enjoyed this book. So I am really excited to explain it to you. Okay. Okay. So the book opens and we're going to meet our main character. Her name is Margaret. In my head, I call her Marge sometimes. But okay. Margaret. And she is describing finding her dream home um, and going on a property tour with her husband, uh, Harold. But he goes by Hal. So we got Margaret and Hal. Okay. They're our main people. Okay. This house. They're touring. Beautiful. Victorian. Pristine uh, pristine condition with a suspiciously low price. Always be suspicious yeah, of the low price. That's not good. No. <laughs> Um, they're touring the property and they're going, they're doing that thing where like when you walk into each room, you start like envisioning how you want to decorate it and what kind of furniture you want to buy. Back when we were buying houses, we know we're like, oh, you'd put the couch there. Like yeah, that yeah, whole yeah. vibe, right? Can I tell you one thing I, I actually do like that they do, they've been doing more and more on Zillow and what? things like that is when they go and they digitally stage the room. Oh yeah. I like it. Like show me both. Show me the room empty yeah. and then be like, and then you could put like, you know, the Amazon couch. Listen, disagree. I want AI out of everything. No, it's not AI. I'm talking <laughs> about the Photoshop. No, they did it at our house. It was confusing when our house, when we bought it because the third floor, the attic area, yeah. they made it look fully finished with yeah, like a pool table it. in it and like a big screen TV. <laughs> it's so and wild. then we get in there. I'm like, it. the this window's is broken. An, this is an attic, y'all. Yeah. And the window's broken. There are ghosts up here. Yeah. Okay. So the real ghosts s- of squirrels <laughs> and bees. So many bees. <laughs> there was one window that was just every time I opened it, dead bees would fall out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had it checked. There's not uh, there's not bees up there. For now. So um, they're going through the house, and the real estate agent is with them. Mm-hmm. And the real estate agent says, I am legally required to inform you that there has been a death in this house. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Because this is an old trope. The yeah. legally required. They're not. Are they not? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. It depends, actually. I think each state has different regulations, and it has to do with, like, timelines and murder. I think mm. if it was, like, a crime scene murder, yeah. there are certain states where they're like, hey. What if it was just a carbon monoxide leak? <laughs> I feel like they should tell you that for a different reason I during think the inspection. Like, yeah. hey, by the way. By the way, the last people who lived here. The, he- the heater just leaks carbon monoxide, and nobody's putting up. Uh, nobody's changing their batteries on spring forward is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just turned that into a shaming of myself. <laughs> you rolled out the red carpet for that one. Yeah. I need to get more nine volts. They're on the dining room table. <laughs> so, so they're doing an inspection. <laughs> so they're doing an inspection and Margaret and Hal are barely listening as they are informed about this. Uh, we find out is a murder suicide okay. in the property because they're like, Oh, like they're looking at the antique wood. They're looking at the pocket doors. They're mm. not listening to what this uh, lady is saying. Yeah. And they're like, oh, so it was a murder-suicide? Ah, eh, whatever. And they're looking at this property price and they're like, whatever. Listen, How many the- bids have there been? <laughs> not well, enough. Man, not enough. So, um, also, they're like, the murder-suicide was like 100 years ago. And there, there may have been other deaths in the house, but those were from natural causes. Okay? So, no big deal. Okay. And so, they're, they're not listening. Um, they saw the clawfoot tub, antique wood, beautiful picture windows. Um, during the tour, they go through the basement. And the basement is not awful. The way it's described is just like an unfinished dirt basement. And Margaret hates it. Um, like the vibes are bad when she goes down there. It's gross. Oh, the it's vibes stinky. are bad in the murder basement? It's gross and stinky. But um, 
she like has this thought where she's just like this is gross i don't like this but at least the the hot water heater and the circuit breakers are on the first floor and they're not down here so i don't have to come down here yeah um that's a good that's honestly that's a good thought on for her yeah that's i like that i like that that I like that. Actually, is the most human thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's like at least I don't have to go down here. Uh, whatever. It's creepy down here. That's my thought on our basement. Yeah, our basement leaks. We yeah, have, whatever. Yeah. I don't go down there. We're not hanging. No. Um. So, she immediately forgets about how weird the basement is because she goes and sees their big ass backyard, and she's immediately yeah. like, "What? What basement? I don't give a shit." Yeah. So they buy the house, and immediately, like, they're like, "We're putting a bid in. They're using their life savings. They're buying this house." Okay. Um. They celebrate with champagne. And can, I, can I say something? Yeah. I actually wouldn't mind paying that realtor because that realtor knew every person who ever died in the building. <laughs> yeah, like, they're getting their 3%. Like, listen, our realtor, when we were, I was like, what do you think of this place? He's like, I don't know, man, this place sucks. <laughs> okay, what do you think of this place? Well, we can put in a bid, but you're not going to get it. That was our realtor. <laughs> That, but in fairness, he was living in real estate in 2020. Yeah, he no, was I know. Like having a he, existential. Our crisis. real estate agent's name was Brian. He was actually super cool. <laughs> it was Brian and Steve. They're yeah. their business partners, and they were just two guys who were like, "Fuck." Yeah. <laughs> we would walk. We'd show up, and they'd be like, "They want how much for this?" Yeah, this was. They this did is not a cr- try to sell us anything. They'd walk and be like, "This is a dump. We got to get the fuck out of here." Like, every every house in this neighborhood's been foreclosed on at least twice. Yeah, and oh yeah, like, the four oh, the one say? neighborhood, the foreclosure sack, because it, it was a cul de sac of foreclosures. <laughs> yeah, he called it the foreclosure sack. Yeah, he's like, you don't want to live here. <laughs> you don't like, want to live here. Christ. Yeah, I was like, okay. I was like, Brian. Um, well, you could have told us before we pulled it. I didn't realize where it was until I pulled up. <laughs> Google it, dude. There's Street View. You could Listen, save all of us time. I'm just saying, they earn their percentage. So they buy the house. They're yeah. celebrating with champagne. Hal is actually having sparkling juice. Because um, he's sober. Yes. Oh, look they, at that. They call their grown daughter. Her name's Catherine. And let her know. They call her like, we bought a new house. It's gorgeous. Wait, time out. Yeah. They have a grown daughter? Yeah. How old are these people? Older. Because that wasn't made clear to me. I was assuming. I'm introducing that fact now. I know, I know, but I was assuming in my head I had them in their 20s. No, mm -mm. and now you're now you're describing people to me in their 80s. No, no, I'm thinking when our child's grown, we're gonna be very old. I think they had them younger. Okay. Okay. And um, I'm I'm picturing them as like 55, 60. No, I've decided that they are us. Okay, that's do not do that because you are not gonna like where this goes. Oh, okay. (laughs) All right, so they're in their so, 50s, and they have a grown... They how old's a, their grown daughter? Uh, she's, like, in her late 20s. Okay. And her name's Catherine. And so they call her, like, we bought this new house. We're so excited. And she's like, oh, I'm going to come visit when I get a chance. I'm just really busy at work. Cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man in the moon. <laughs> so um, that's the prologue, right? That's the prologue of the book. This yeah. is how we're entering. Chapter one opens, and the first sentence is... The walls of the house are bleeding again. I love this. Which is to be expected. It is September after all. Okay. The bleeding walls aren't the worst thing. There's also the nightly moaning and screaming. That's a real problem because nobody's sleeping. Um, The moaning usually starts at midnight and goes till 6 a.m. So usually the whole month of September is no sleep. But it's so annoying when the blood starts coming out of the walls again. Because you got to get the bucket and clean it up. Um. The bleeding is annoying in the sense that, like, it's not great to wake up every day and see blood dripping down your walls. Um, But it's, like, it's livable. And the bleeding starts at the top floor of the house. So by the end of the month, it gets to the the first floor. Because it it takes time to, like, slowly come down. Okay. You know, this thick, unctuous blood, whatever. Okay. So, like, you know, it's not really a problem if you're spending most of the time on your first floor, you know? All right. (laughs) So... Um, when they first moved in, Margaret would scrub the walls with soap and water and was like really upset because the walls were weeping fluid. And, um, Hal was like, oh, it's probably just a leak. The pipes are old. It's probably just like rust or something in the pipes. Okay. You know? Um, but then, you know, that first month they lived there when the, the bleeding stopped, Hal was just kind of like, oh, well, the problem fixed itself, right? Like the pipes, it must've been like the pipes uh, starting to like freeze or come out of spring or fall, like something, you know, like it's just, it's not blood. That's crazy. Who would think that there was blood weeping out of the walls? Yeah. I mean, that would be a weird thing. Yeah. Um, when it happened again the next year, he was surprised. Um, and the year after that, he was resigned, you know? Yeah. It's September. Ugh, walls are bleeding again. Get the buckets. Yep. 
Um, it's kind of my feeling with our basement in April. It's flooding. <laughs> so this this year, the year we're reading this book, yeah. Um, Margaret doesn't know how Hal feels about it because he's not there. Okay? He's not there. He's not there. Why so she's there? she's cleaning up blood, and she's like, "I wonder if Hal would complain about this." Don't know. He's not here. Um, Where is he? Oh, we'll get to that. So she, Margaret doesn't know why the walls bleed or who's screaming at night or why there are mutilated children running through the house. She has like theories that over the years she's constructed and ideas, um, but she doesn't know why every September all of this starts to happen. It happens every September? Every September. Go on vacation. <laughs> Leave. Leave. If it's just September. Baby, go down to If the place was cheap. If yeah. the place was cheap, right? Mm -hmm. You got a low payment and a good APR. Yeah. Because this was three years ago? Yeah. They've been there for three years. Yeah. So I'm assuming they get, they got this during a, a period when the interest rates are low. Pretty good. So, and if you didn't pay that much for it and you spent your life savings and you're older, you probably, your payments probably aren't that high. Yeah, go on a cruise. Yeah, not, but I wouldn't say go on a cruise. I wouldn't go on a cruise, but they could. Yeah, but like go somewhere. I would just go visit my, uh, my daughter. Yeah. I would just be like, hey, every September we, we leave. We go to the Florida. <laughs> we, go to, we go to Boca. So she's not going to leave. She's going to go to her sunroom um, because she has this beautiful sunroom in this beautiful house. Oh, okay. The rest of the house is covered in blood and yeah, screaming sunroom, mutilated children. But... Sunroom, good. She's going to go paint. She likes to paint in her okay. free time. So she's uh, trying to paint. And every time she closes her eyes, all she can see is the color red. She doesn't. It's hard to paint in September. Because her creativity is really just bogged down mm. by what's happening in September. I get that. And it really messes with her because of the no sleeping and the screaming. This and the is the yelling. worst form of seasonal depression I've ever heard. <laughs> um, so we're going to... Frederica. I want to talk to you about Frederica. Who's Frederica? I'm about to tell you. So Frederica is like the, the maid that helps around the house. She's the housekeeper, right? There's a maid? There's a housekeeper. Wait. Hold on. So they have a full-time... Mm -hmm. housekeeper yeah her name is Frederica they can afford to not be there in September Frederica came with the house that is insane what um because she has lived through hundreds of Septembers um because Frederica passed away in the house oh my god oh my god so they have a ghost servant they have a ghost servant and her and Marge close fingers crossed like they're they're buddy buddies they at first, Margaret was like, this you're is weird. Ghost. This is weird. I don't, this gives me, I don't like this. I don't like that you're trying to interact with me. But eventually, Frederica kind of grew on her. They had a bond. They have a bond now. There's a nice friendship. They make each other tea. Frederica helps clean the house. It's, there's just a I house feel like her. I've missed a whole episode. No, I'm going to get you there. Don't worry. Okay. So the other thing about Frederica is that when we are envisioning her, um, it's kind of rough because she has a huge gaping gash down the center of her head, um, kind of like a pumpkin would get split with an axe because there's a skull. Um, her her face was uh, chopped in half with a skull. Uh, uh, axe is what I'm looking for. Okay. So this this is what she looks like all the time. The ghosts look like how they died. Okay. So axe through the face, yeah, yeah, weeping yeah. wounds, skull open, brains out. I've seen the, the BBC version of ghosts. Yeah. The British version of exactly. ghosts. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're in the similar yeah. line of thinking. Yeah, not the American version. No, no, the BBC it doesn't one's look way good. better. I've, I've never watched the American version, but it like every clip good. I've seen from it, I was like, mm. No. This um, feels like, you know what it feels like? It feels like the young Sheldon of ghosts. Yeah. When I see it, I was like, mm, there's just something about there's it. Something it's off. just It's uncanny valley. So... Margaret and Frederica become companions um, and Frederica often keeps Margaret company uh, while Hal is deep in his work because Al is a novelist and he writes books. OK. And he is just kind of like in the zone. All work and no play makes Hal a dull boy. Exactly. OK. Um, so Frederica is coming downstairs to in the kitchen to make a pot of tea while they're sitting in the kitchen. Elias materializes in the corner. So Elias, time out, yeah. real quick. I have to. I, I just need to ask. Yeah, is this book funny? Yeah, I mean, is it supposed to be funny? I, I found it very funny. Yeah, I think it's so camp because yeah. even as we're describing this, it's so funny. The idea of this woman has a haunted house. Yeah, she is dealing with the bleeding walls. She's dealing with Frederica's open wounds. She's yeah. about to. I'm telling you about Elias. 
But at the end of the day, she's like, this ornate walnut wood railing, you know, this clawfoot tub. This is my house. I'm not leaving. No, listen, I get it. <laughs> having dealt having dealt with recent real estate markets. Yeah. And the fact that she's like, it's a deal. And they're like, oh, well, the neighbors are annoying. It's like, okay, whatever. Like, again, like with our yeah. house, they're like, you need a new roof. There's uh, the basement leaks. The whole place might be haunted. Like, those are actual things they told us about our house, <laughs> right? Like, okay. And I was like, it's all right, a it's deal. fine. It's fine. Okay. Um, so I think it's so funny because usually when we have a haunted house, the person who is being victimized by the haunt is really scared, terrified, worried. They're trying to find their way out. Marge is not fucking leaving, babe. Yeah. She loves her house. She knows her ghosts. She's like, okay. Is there a spooky lake? No. There's no spooky pond? I'm sorry. Pond? There's no spooky pond. Damn. Okay, but I got to tell you about Elias. Okay. So Elias is a nine-year-old little boy. Oh, uh, so we don't walk with Elias. <laughs> That's such a deep cut. <laughs> such and a only deep cut. a very small percentage. I want you to know, that. by the way, Elias. So just to get, just for the listeners. Okay. Elias, there was a WWE wrestler <laughs> named Elias. Yeah. He was literally a, a, a drifter. Yeah. Who also wrestled. That uh -huh. was his whole character. And he would be like, WWE stands for walk with Elias. Anyway, they fired him. Yeah. He is now on TikTok lives reading the Bible. Oh, shit. Every time I log into TikTok, Elias is on there and he, he is reading. He wants to start a cult so bad. He wants He to... wanted to start a cult then. No, he wants to be Hillsong. Oh, that's... He wants to be Hillsong so badly. And oh, like, no. honestly, Hillsong, he Hillsong the wrestler is a great gimmick. Damn. We need more of that. Damn. But anyway, so nine-year-old Elias. Nine-year-old Elias. Who is not a professional wrestler. No, he's a sullen, gaunt, milky-eyed little boy. When did he die? Um, I'm not going to get, I don't have the exact years, but like, but is he maybe like, like two owners ago, but is he like, so he's like maybe in the eighties? Uh, I would say like, I think the sixties. Okay. So 60s. he wouldn't know what good professional wrestling is. is no. my point. <laughs> he was, so, he was back there watching. Like he maybe heard of Bruno um, San Martino. Elias is, has the vibes of like a grumpy cat. So he's in the corner. Okay. He's sulking. Okay. He's staring at the at um Margaret with her, his milky little eyes and his sullen demeanor. She doesn't get too close. I don't to like him. the description "milky eyes." Yeah, I know it's gross. I love it. So she Margaret talks to Elias, but like she doesn't get close. So like she'll be like, "So it's a beautiful day outside. Looking nice today. Weather's great." But like she doesn't go near him. Um, Frederica doesn't interact with Elias at all. So like okay. Margaret talks to him, doesn't get too close. Frederica ignores Elias completely. Okay. Um, Margaret heads over to make some toast to go with the tea that Frederica is making. Um, the problem is Elias is standing kind of in front of the, the toaster, like the countertop where the toaster is. Margaret swiftly reaches right past his head to drop the bread in as her arm moves uh, his face turns to black ash. His eyes roll to the back of his skull and his mouth screams wide as his fangs come out and he bites her arm. Okay. Okay. This isn't Margaret's first rodeo. So she moves super quick. She's like, Whoop -ah! with the toast. Yeah. He grazes her arm. Okay. He doesn't draw blood. No like biggie. Like a cat. Yeah. Elias is pissed he didn't get the biter. So he makes like this super loud noise. So like when Elias is mad, he makes this crazy noise like the sound of a jet engine starting. And his mouth goes really wide, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so he makes this noise because he's mad that he didn't get the biter. Very, okay. again, grumpy cat. <laughs> he just got yeah, grumpy yeah, yeah. cat energy. Um, this is the Stephen King version of Ghost. <laughs> of that of the sitcom Ghost. Yeah. This is the Stephen King version of it. like Or or like the ring version of it. I don't know. You got it. We're only, we're not even out of I know, but we're one. two in. Listen, we're two in. I um, get you. Most of the things that leave that live in the house leave Hal alone. They don't fuck with her husband. Okay. Except for Elias. He likes to go hang out in the corners of Hal's office. Margaret doesn't think it's a big deal. Just avoid his face and you have nothing to worry about. Right? Like, just don't yeah. go near him. You're fine. He's just standing in the fucking corner. What's the big deal? But Hal really doesn't like him. He's yeah. like, he's creepy. He's always staring at me. And because he doesn't want him around, then he's going to be near Hal. Because <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a, a cat. cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I got you. So, um... Margaret is sitting there eating her toast and tea. She checks her phone and sees she has numerous missed calls and texts from her daughter about call her immediately. It's important. Why the fuck aren't you answering? I need to talk to you about dad. She's been calling every day and it's becoming really hard to avoid her. So she decides she's going to call her back. Um, and as she's making that decision, 
a, a small finger crosses through her eye line, right? Like a, like a boop, like that. Um, and in front of her, she turns her head and in front of her is a, a very small little girl in a blue floral dress who looks very sickly and is covered in dirt and something fucking terrible has happened to this little girl's skull. Um, there's a lot of body horror in this book and I'm going to avoid it as much as possible because yeah. I don't like body horror. I don't like body horror. Um, let's just say... Let's just say it's a, it's a little, something bad happened to this little girl. Uh, but it is important for the story. Her, her head is crushed in and her eyeballs kind of hang out. Okay. Okay, but that's Gross. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So how's your cliff bar? So I to bite into it. I literally pulled out a cliff bar. <laughs> so um so she's drinking her tea and she goes, Hi Angelica. Like, cause this is Angelica. And she does Margaret doesn't know all the little pranksters' names, but she knows some of them. And Angelica is standing in front of the basement door. And she's pointing down, just pointing towards the basement door and not saying anything. Is it Angelica or Angelica? Uh, Angelica, you're right. Because I'm thinking of Rugrats. Yeah. Okay, it's Angelica. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so not saying anything, pointing at the door. Uh, Margaret isn't falling for this trick again, though. All right, this is not her first September. Um, Angelica was the one of the first ones to arrive. And her arrival means the rest of the prankter, pranksters will be showing up soon in the following days. And they always point to the basement. And she's not falling for it again. Okay? Okay. Um, also, she always refers to all the little ghosts as pranksters. Okay? okay. She's like, the little pranksters are up to it again. Yeah. Um, Margaret grabs her cell phone, opens the notes app where she sees her to-do list. Uh, which I'm like, maybe she's not a boomer age because <laughs> she's using yeah. the notes app properly. She's probably Gen uh, X. Yeah, Gen X. Uh, she hears a tiny voice directly behind her. He's down there. And the pranksters don't usually speak. Um, and she hears it again. He's down there. Uh, she repeats, pointing at the basement door. It's it's Angelica. Yeah. Angelica? What did I say? Angelica. Okay. Angel. Um. Now, the basement door is boarded up from the outside, okay? She she put boards on the outside, hammered it closed. So this little girl is just pointing at the door saying he's down there, pointing at the boarded up door. Um, Margaret said to herself, of course he is. I think that's where he lives. But uh, Angelica, you know, she keeps saying it. And she's like, I know, Angelica. Ugh. And Margaret turns to walk back towards her studio to paint with her tea and toast. Um, at this moment, Angelica lets out a huge high pitched scream and disappears, right? She's pissed that she yeah. didn't go down there. Margaret calls Catherine back. She answers on the first ring and she's fucking pissed. No, hello. She's like, mom, why the fuck aren't you answering? I can't get a hold of fucking dad. And Catherine has been calling him for weeks and he's not returning his calls. Margaret has been dreading having this conversation with her daughter and has been putting it off. He's gone. Um, and... Margaret doesn't know how to explain that he's gone. Catherine is yelling on the other end of the line, but Margaret really isn't paying attention because a large bird just flew into the window um, that she's standing next to and is dead sliding down the window. Just mm. a bird just flew into the side of the window. They should put up one of those window clings. Another uh, another sign of September is that the birds are going to start flying into the side of the house. Oh, but if you put up the window clings, yeah. though, then they would be like, oh, there's a bird there. Don't fly into it. Yeah. Well, in past years, she would spend days picking up the many, many dead bird carcasses that had flown into the walls and windows of the house. But after their first year of living there, Hal had gotten rid of all the bird feeders, and that lowered the total number of birds hanging around. Okay, see, now I have a problem with this house. <laughs> okay. I can't have bird feeders? Well, you can't have bird feeders because it it'll attracts kill too the many birds. birds. No, but, attracts- but that'll kill the birds. Like I understand, but like I like birds. I want to have I know bird you do. feeders. That's why we have bird feeders. So this house, what you're telling me is this house is the equivalent of basically a giant windmill. <laughs> it's a giant electric windmill. It's just. It's a bug zapper. Yeah. For birds. But for birds. <laughs> they just kamikaze into the side of this so house. So this is actually not the September house. This is the suet house. <laughs> wow. Bird knowledge. Yeah. Dropping bird bombs. <laughs> so um, Margaret is just out like, kind of like daydreaming. She drifts off a lot when she's like talking to people because she's looking at this bird sliding down the window. She's not really listening to her daughter. Has the daughter ever been to the house? No. We're going to get into that. Okay. So like 
she's looking at it and then she comes back to the conversation and she's like this is why i'm wondering if they are like i understand she understands how to use the notes app but like, they might be boomers <laughs> because like there's so many things going wrong they treat their entire house like it's the broken stair yeah like the entire house is the broken stair like this there's no she is not trying to like break uh the cycle of trauma <laughs> at all she's just like listen if we just clean up the bird <laughs> Clean up the birds. Don't try to put a net up. Don't no. try to put up anything to stop the birds. I don't birds. want solutions. No. We're powering through. We're powering through. I just watched a video. It was at Salisbury Beach, right? Okay. And they were like talking about like these houses where they're spending millions of dollars a year to rebuild the dunes. Okay. Like yeah. they truck all this this sand in. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Yeah, this this, this whole area is gonna wash away within like twenty years. Yeah. And they're like, they said this this area was gonna be washed away by twenty ten. It's 2024 and we're still here. We need funding from the state because we're running out of money. <laughs> and it, the guy's like, yeah, but you've been dumping a million dollars worth of sand in your backyard yeah, yeah, yeah. every fucking year. And the guy's like, this house, this area is worth $2 billion. Uh, like, that's how September house feels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, this house is so cheap. I love this place. The walls bleed. There's so many mutilated children that scream at me all day. And now dead birds. And I don't know where my husband is because he just <laughs> vanished. And my daughter does not like talking to me. Um. So then Marge is like, yeah, he left a month ago. And Catherine's like, what the fuck do you mean? Okay. Um. To Margaret, it doesn't feel like a month ago. You know, he left emotionally a while ago. Like, he stopped sleeping in their bed. Um, he wanted to sell the house and move out. And he would spend every waking moment in his office working on his book. Um, but it's been a month since he physically left. So, like, to Margaret, his departure was just, like, part of almost a year. Like, she's like, yeah, he left, whatever. But Catherine is like, what do you fucking mean, Mom? Um, but now he's not answering anyone's call. Yeah, now he's not answering anyone's call. So... Catherine is like, well, where the fuck did he go? And Margaret's like, I'm not really sure. Um, actually, she says, I'm not really sure, dear, because she's very polite the way she talks, Margaret. Um, mm, I Mar don't like that. Margaret is one of those gals that, like, every time Catherine curses, she goes, language, dear. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Real 80s mom. Feel. Yeah. So Catherine is like, well, has he contacted you at all? And she's like, no. Did he leave a note? Blah, blah. Like nothing. And Margaret is completely unfazed. And her being so unfazed is like Catherine is raging. She's like, why the fuck are you not in a panic? Yeah. Like this crazy that you don't care. Um, Catherine's like, why did you let him leave? And Margaret is like, I don't think he could handle another September. But she doesn't tell her that. And she was like, oh, we don't need to discuss it, dear. You know how your father can get. And Catherine is like, exactly my point. Why are you not freaking out? Right? Like, yeah. Um, anyway, Catherine freaks out and is like, I'm going to come visit you. Oh, no. OK. And so In Catherine's September? never been to this house. Uh oh. And it is September. This sounds like a wacky series of events. <laughs> um, Margaret immediately panics. She's like, she cannot come here in September. OK, like she she's never been here before, let alone during like the biggest the biggest month of the year for the house. You know, um, she you know, what's you know, what's inconvenient what? is that it's not an October house. I know because then they would just be spooky and you could cash in. Yeah. You'd be like, yeah, it's just a haunted house. Come on in, kids. Yeah. Come on. Walk. Through. Look at this. Ooh. Don't put your hand nail on Elias. Yeah, honey, I just shaved. It. Sign this waiver. <laughs> Sign this. They're just waiver. peeled grapes. Sign. <laughs> It's, it's just it's, a bowl of spaghetti. It's I don't a understand. bowl of eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Margaret goes out to her beautiful full wraparound porch. Okay. Um, with like the rocking chairs on the front. You know the one. Yeah. And her neighbor Edie has walked over to join her. So they're outside sitting on the rocking chairs. And she's discussing with Edie um, her daughter's visit. And Edie's like... Edie is a, her basically her best friend, and she has confided in Edie what happens in the house. Mm -hmm. So Edie's like, "Oh my God, how, what are you gonna do? Like, this, yeah. how are you gonna handle this?" Especially, she describes it as the house being in full bloom. <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> because I think the thing is we have to remember is that these little ooky spooks happen all year, but it's September they fucking go crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 
in full bloom is like insane and Edie's also like i don't know how you deal with this every day let alone in september what are you gonna do yeah so when we get to the next chapter it kind of goes back in time and we're we're prequeling and when hal and marge first meet early romance meet cute uh we find out that one of their first dates they went to go see the movie the exorcist oh. and it's like they're super cute in love hal was super scared of the movie and marge wasn't when she saw the movie she was like yeah whatever I mean, it's a really good take on the human fear of losing a child and the lack of control you feel as a parent. Okay. Like she like really just like pulled it apart and she's like, this is the core of the fear of the movie. Yeah, and, she not... was like, and then she was like, that's pea soup. Yeah. But uh, Hal was like really scared yeah. and Margaret wasn't. And so, you know, obviously we're just learning that Hal is a little bit more scared and Margaret kind of picks things apart and looks at like, is mm-hmm. like, nah, it's fine. Um, then we meet Father Cyrus. The priest. Okay. Why is there a priest? Because. So we're meeting this priest, Father Cyrus, and he uh, he's come to the house before and blessed it and performed like semi exorcisms on the house. Um, it works. They obviously didn't work. No, no. So like, here's the thing. It works for like a week. So like he'll show up on September 1st or, and like do like an exorcist go around blessing and praying everything. Yeah. And all the pranksters will disappear. The blood will stop dripping. Everybody. It goes really quiet. The screaming and moaning stops. Okay. But after about a week, it comes back. So it's a really short term. <laughs> like It's not a long term solution. Could that be because of it's like an antibiotic situation where like it's been exercised so many times that yeah. what's left is like, okay. Yeah, exactly. kind of shrugging it off. At this point, they're super ghosts. <laughs> super ghosts, yeah. So Father Father Cyrus is super old and frail. Uh, you, he's so old and frail. So old and frail. Um, and he's just shambling around the house. Um, because I, I can picture him. Yeah. I can picture just like walking around with a little thing of holy water. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, wait, where was I? Okay, so the thing is, is she calls him. He's done this before, but she called him because she's like, Catherine's coming. I got to buy myself a week. Mm-hmm. We got to get one week of silence so that she doesn't freak the fuck out. Yeah. So he shows up. He starts in the kitchen. He's praying over the room. They're walking through the living room. Um, he's sidestepping the blood dripping down the walls. Like he's he's accustomed to the house at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go through the whole house praying and flicking f- holy water just as you described. Here's the thing. Here's yeah. the thing, right? Like the Catholic Church for the longest time. Oh, yeah, let's talk about this. Okay. No, no, but like they're they're like, you know, pro exorcism all these things. Yeah. And like it's one of the reasons why like the, in their mind they should exist because they're battling demons and ghosts and blah blah. Yeah, right? yeah. But like if you were a priest mm-hmm. and you had a house that is so haunted that the walls bleed and that there's mutilated children screaming and pointing at stuff. Yeah. Wouldn't you as the church buy that fucking house and use it as an example of your powers? Potentially. But instead, you're just like an old guy. It's like, no, we got to keep this one quiet. Yeah, shh, don't tell nobody. If people know about how thin the mortal the, the mortal coil, coil is. Listen, and I always, the veil. my favorite thing. Listen, I don't have a lot of favorites about the Catholic Church. Yeah. But one of my favorite things is the exorcisms. Yeah. And all of the belief structure that goes into that. Because I think the Catholic Church admitting that we need that specific type of intervention proves that ghosts are real. Yeah. And so it's like if the Catholic Church is saying through their behaviors that demons and ghosts are real, then me watching uh, UFO Cowboys isn't too weird. OK, <laughs> I I think that I think that they're for a very long time. They needed to come up with reasons why they were getting paid. Yeah. And they threw in a little bit of demon stuff. OK. When in reality, it was just people who had problems yeah. who needed actual care. <laughs> And instead, a man comes in and squirts them with a water gun and then slaps them in the face with a bush yep, while yep. burning some incense and then goes, you're healed. Satan's out of you. And the person's like, I just have Tourette's. Yeah. Oh, well. So Father Cyrus goes to the whole house and he's like, OK, we got to bless the basement. We got to do it. And Marge is like, ah, do we got to? But they, she knows they got to bless the basement. So she gets a crowbar okay. and she starts removing the wood from the door. He's blessing the doorways, um, you know, praying. But, like, the general vibes of the room change, like a shift in the energy. Yeah. The temperature drops, you know. Um, he's praying, flicking holy water down the stairwell at this point, And a thick smell starts coming up from the basement. Yeah. All of a sudden, his arms go straight to his side of his body, and he's completely rigid. And 
he leaves the ground he starts levitating his head snaps back and his eyes are wide open but not blinking and he's screaming at like an eardrum shattering level like super high pitched scream yeah and all of a sudden the sound stops and he's just hanging there in the air quietly father wake and up and suddenly a huge like black fog uh comes out of his mouth oh and fills the room like but it's green not mile. a fog yeah it's Hundreds and thousands of big fat black flies. Yeah, like the Green yeah. Mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, ah. yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, also, I one note I forgot to put in here. When she opens the door to the basement, she has Bible pages stapled to the inside of the door. <laughs> so okay. this was a solution I think her and Father Cyrus came up with. They're yeah, like, yeah. let's just rip pages out of the Bible, staple them to the inside of the door, close the door, nail the door closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So she screams down the basement, fucking stop it, which is like, whoa, are you cursing? Um, and slams the door closed. Once the door closes, he falls out of the sky and crashes on the floor. Yeah. And he's gagging and shaking and like, and then like little bugs come out of his throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he gets up and he literally like bounces out and runs out to the car. He has like a driver. He's not a driver. He's like his friend yeah, yeah, yeah. from the church who's waiting outside for him. He bounces out of there dude he's like Hoo! and like this little old man da -da 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 -da, out the door yeah, yeah, yeah um because that never happened before he's performing this exercise in a few years before yeah, yeah, yeah once a year but like this is the first time flies and levitating and yeah that so um we learn we had learned before this that frederica makes herself scarce um oh no i'm sorry for uh catherine Catherine's coming and Margaret is like, hey, Frederica, you know, you're my girl. You know, I love you. Could you make yourself scarce when Catherine comes? OK, because I don't know if she's going to be able to handle, you know, what you look like. Yeah. Like it's we love I love you. I love how much you help me. You're a great friend to have. But like yeah. just like while she's here, just back off a little. While she's here, we're roommates. Yeah. What? Oh, but this causes uh, Frederica deep offense. I bet. And she's super upset. And Kath, uh, Margaret goes to apologize and like goes to like kind of grab her arm and give her like a hug and like, I'm so sorry I offended you and hurt your feelings. When she does this, um, she shot back in time in her mind because like she's like it zips through her body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happens is anytime uh, Margaret touches any of the ghosts or pranksters, she is then immediately like teleported in her mind to how they died. Yeah. And she physically feels the pain. So, like, she's, like, sent back to the – there's, like, a second bedroom upstairs where the old owner, this guy that owned the house, he – I think his name was Jasper. <laughs> Pretty sure it's Jasper. Yeah. Jasper um, is, like, maniacally laughing with an axe and, like, slams it through Frederica's head. And, like, she feels it like it's her. Yeah. And then she comes back and she – I think she vomits a little. And that was from, like, 1880 racist. Oh, my God. I literally think it's 1880. Yeah, well, you said Jasper. That's, yeah. that's a very that's 1880s. A 80s name. That's a very, you know, uh, Frederica, you know, going yeah. to, where, by the way, did they ever say where this house is located? Is this like California? I don't think I ever, is this... I don't remember where it's located. I pictured it very like North Carolina. That's where I, in my brain, I was like, this is like in the like outskirts of North I'm Carolina. I'm just picturing because the name Frederica has more of like a Latin connotation. Mm. I feel like we're looking more at the Southwest, like more of where we'd have um, somebody with a Spanish name yeah. who's working on, on in that job in those years. Like it, especially like for a Frederica and a Jasper to be in the same building together, <laughs> that feels very like 1880s Cal Southern California. Yeah. Like really, really Southern California, or uh, you know Nevada, or even Arizona, okay. like type of thing. So like right. to me, I'm picturing it more that, nice. like that, like not desert community, but like that. Um, yeah, no, there's definitely trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're in a wooded area. Yeah. So it doesn't feel Pennsylvania, is what no, I'm saying. No, no, it doesn't feel Pennsylvania at all. Yeah, there was a minute when you said wraparound porch, I did start to lean a little bit towards like the Carolinas, just because yeah. that's a like more of a common thing. But yeah, I'd be interested to know where they think it's set. So next day, Marge is up early digging in the yard. She's digging up Elias's mother's bones. Okay. Now, she has uh, dug them up before. Okay. And they're currently buried in the backyard in like a trash bag. Okay. Okay. So what happened is 
<laughs> when she bought the, well, the after the first September, right? She started digging. She wanted to figure out who the fuck these ghosts are because just like any Caucasian person in a horror film, she wants to help the ghost. She's like, I'm going to I'm going to help them. I'm going to learn using their Casper history. Casper rules? Yeah, Casper rules. Okay. So She's like, she's walking up the stairs instead of out the front door. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get it. So she had gone to the library, looked up old news articles. She's mm-hmm. trying to figure out what happened to Elias so she can help him. Why does he bite me? You know, yeah, like that yeah, type yeah. of thing. And what she found out is that Elias's mom had passed away and that she was buried there at the house and that, you know, there was, it was something very bad happened to her. So yeah. that one of those first years she went and she dug up all the bones and she brought them into the house and presented them to Elias. And it was very successful. We'll get into that. But it's very funny in this part because we find out that, like, after that first year, she, like, didn't know what to do with the bones. So she separated them in the Tupperware containers, like, finger bones, arm bones, hip bones, and then put them back in the dirt in giant Tupperware bins. Because she's like, I just, it's easier to, like, get them out this way if I yeah. need them again. But then she hated carrying in all those Tupperware bins, so she just started using a garbage bag, right? So, like, Margaret is, like, really, like, doing this thing every yeah. year. And she's just like, no, you know what? It's just convenience at this point. At this point, I'm picturing her just, like, walking in with a dirty garbage bag and just shaking it. <laughs> like just all, shaking like it. Like, we shake the temptation streets at yeah, the cat? Yeah, just, <laughs> come <again>. here. <laughs> Elias, come here. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's exactly what What if here, you know, I would do if I was her, I would take one of the finger bones, make a little bone broth, right? (laughs) And then put that into a spray bottle (laughs) and then squirt them, (laughs) squirt all APs in front of the toast. (laughs) Yeah, I told you, not in front of the toast. (laughs) Get the counter. (laughs) This would be if Bill Murray was in the house. (laughs) This would be if if Peter Bankman from Ghostbusters. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So... Here's what happens. She brings the bones in. When she brings the bone in, Elias, Elias always like uh, shows up, yeah. and then his mother's ghost comes out of the bones, and then they hug each other, screaming, and then they disappear. Okay. For a week or two. So again, she's just like, she's I got to do. Need to get a week. I got to get. She's putting band aids over these uh, leaks because she's like, I need one fucking week. Yeah. Okay. She's painting the missing stair. <laughs> <laughs> she's yeah. not not fixing it um, but she is painting it so she after they like uh walk off into the sunset mom and son she grabs the bag of bones and is like heading back downstairs <laughs> um <laughs> later that <laughs> afternoon garbage bag it's a human skeleton it's the full bag yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not i'm just picturing like a 60 year old woman. i'm picturing our next door neighbor honestly <laughs> She does a lot of garden work. Oh my god! Honestly, if you picture that her, that changes the game. If I'm telling you, that's game. who I've been picturing this yeah. entire time. Our next door neighbor is she's a retired librarian. Retired librarian. Love her. She's a very great lady. She has a garden so beautiful it shames me every day. Every day. Um, and we talk to her a lot. She's very yeah. nice. She was the one that told us we had ghosts. Oh my god! She tells us all the stories of the hauntings yeah. of our house. Yeah, she knows everything about our house because she's been here for like thirty five years, yeah. and she just watched people come in and go, and come yeah. in and go, come she's in and go. So funny. So when we moved in, and she was like, "Your house is haunted." We're like, "All right, whatever, lady. We, we can afford it." <laughs> the eleventh house do what we've we been can on. Do yeah. Um, ghosts? Do they help pay the the mortgage? I don't give a shit. Listen, all I'm saying. Okay, so. Um, Catherine arrives. Okay. This is, she's walking downstairs. Catherine's coming in the front door and Catherine immediately is like, you wouldn't fucking believe the traffic. Total bullshit. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, immediately yelling and Margaret automatically hits her with a language dear. So they haven't seen each other in many years. Okay. Okay. And our perspective, Margaret is taking in Catherine and she's like, God, her job is really stressful. I can see how much it's aged her. Um, Catherine is looking at her mom and she's like, when did your hair go so gray? Like, Mm -hmm. again, they haven't seen each other in a long time. And then we're we're always learning about how like kind of they're estranged. They're not close. And this is being discussed with us in this part. Right. Yeah. So then um, Marge being the consummate host is like, let's get you settled into a bedroom. Right. Like, I don't want to catch up with you. How was like, how was your drive? Like, let's get you, let's get you settled down. Make a cup of tea. Right. Yeah. Um, now, the thing is that Marge is actually having an issue is that the problem is that every room has a prankster. And yeah. she's trying to figure out which room is going to be the best room to put Catherine in. 
Um, so the first uh, room uh, has this gal, Blythe, that lives in there. Okay. And Blythe lives in the fireplace um, because she was chained up inside of it and burned alive. Okay. Oh. And so if you sleep in that bed, Blythe crawls across the floor, her ashy, crazy, burned body, and then crawls on top of you and screams into your mouth. Okay. okay. Also, we learned that they'd never light fires in the house because if you light a fire blight anywhere in the house, because there's multiple fireplaces, again, gorge house. Yeah. Multiple fireplaces. If you light any fires in the house, Blythe freaks out and starts screaming and clawing the walls. Gotcha. So it's a real bummer when it comes to heat, uh, saving money on heat. They yeah. They can't yeah, use yeah. fireplaces. Yeah. No ambiance. So again, room number one, Blythe. Maybe not great for Catherine. Okay. Uh, second bedroom is where Jasper is. I think I was right on this. That's where the guy that fr- like, killed Frederica lives. Is yeah. right. He doesn't live there. He is um, crumpled up like a dead spider, like bones broken in odd ways, in the closet. And um, he has like a Cheshire cat psycho smile. Um, the newspapers reported when she did all that research. Uh, M- Marge found out that his death had been reported as suicide by the police, but. Having seen his haunted apparition, she does not think it was suicide, right? Like his yeah. body is not that of something that could, that's not what happened, right? So the last guest bedroom is pretty cool. It's really beautiful. Only issue, only issue, large gash across the wall that appears to be uh, leaking. Uh, there's a, it's like a, a, a big void and it's oozing out and it's got the viscosity of blood but it's black, like tar. It looked, it's like, it's blood, but it's not blood. Okay. This sounds a lot like the crack, and uh, there's a crack from this one season of Doctor Who. Yes. That like runs through the exactly. whole season that where it's like a tear in reality. Yes. Yeah. Losing horrifying crack on the wall. Yeah. I would pick, I would go with the Jasper room. He's, does he talk? He doesn't. He's a crumpled up dead spider, and he, he like, I guess, like, Horsely giggles sometimes, and he has like a match. He's like always trying to light this match. Oh, okay. But he can't really bend his arm because it's broken in the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah, I would put her in there. Yeah. He he seems like the one who can't do anything. Yeah. So so far, because the other two options are the ashy ghost that crawls and screams in your face as you're sleeping, mm-hmm. or the uh the crack into the eternal void that is weeping blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, Marge does pick the Jasper room. Good. Marge yeah. is smart. Marge is smart. She's like no. The chance that she's even going to hang up the clothes in the closet, pretty pretty low. Yeah, it, Catherine feels like a girl who lives out of the suitcase yeah. when she goes. So um, Catherine is, of course, uh, oblivious to everything that's going on in Margaret's mind. She's busy on her phone Googling where the local police station is, right? She calls them. They're like, we can't do anything until tomorrow. It's like 4.55. It's that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so she... I'm going to take a report right now. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? I'm almost at the end of my shift. You're like, I answered this phone. Friday Eve. What are you talking about? Friday Um, Eve. So she just like uh, aggressively hangs up her phone, which is really funny when you have a smartphone, you don't have a real phone. Yeah. Um, And then goes into the dad's office because she's like, I'm going to go figure out, like find some clues on where dad went. And when she gets in there... Oh, man. The way it's described, beautiful. Just like wood cabinetry with like the carvings in it. Beautiful executive wooden desk. And she starts trying to open drawers. Everything is locked. Every cabinet's locked. Every drawer is locked. Yeah. And she's like, what the fuck? Where? How, how is everything locked? Um, in this, we're learning some backstory about Catherine's teenage years. Um, like, you know, she just ultimately didn't really like her parents very much. They had a really troubled existence together it's teenager 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 um and then we find out recently that Catherine broke up with her long-term girlfriend oh and they were together for multiple years i was gonna make a joke about her being a bisexual scientist but this yeah. is very very funny yeah so um the reason they broke up is because Catherine is inherently angry uh focuses on work too much uh had to cut back her drinking and like all that and they still ended up breaking up yeah right? yeah, yeah so Catherine. So let me get this straight. Yeah. Catherine uh, is a workaholic. Yeah. Who uh, cut back on her vices, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but is still considered too angry. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know anyone like that. Nope. <laughs> so, um, Catherine heads to the kitchen uh, to find her mom. All I'm saying is Catherine can do better than her girlfriend. 
just whatever, Catherine, you deserve more. So Catherine heads to the kitchen. And when she gets there, she finds a kettle on the stove Mm -hmm. and yells out to her mom like, Mom, you left a kettle on the stove. Like it's it's probably um, gas. Oh, it's probably a gas flame. Um, And at that moment, Margaret's like, damn it, Frederica. Right. Like because she's like, you left this fucking fire burning. Anyway, so the... The next chapter, we learn about... What if parents actually like don't develop Alzheimer's? What is just a series of ghosts playing pranks with them? <laughs> just keep leaving the oven on. So there, the thing is we're going to learn in like the next chapter is um, Margaret has this uh, mantra that she tells herself all the time. There are rules to things. Everything is survivable. Okay. It even says it on the front of the book. You can survive anything. Okay. There are rules to things. Everything is survivable. Okay. This is, oh my God, the amount of trauma she has been through. Yeah. This reminds me of um, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah. When she's like, you can survive anything for 15 seconds. Yeah. Just turn the thing. Yeah. When she's counting to 15 and she's turning the wheel that she was locked in that bunker for so many years. Yeah. And so to, in order to explain this mindset, I'm going to read directly from the book. So this okay. is an actual quote. Um, it says... The thing is, every situation, no matter how unusual, has rules. They might be strange rules. They might be difficult to figure out. But once they are learned, they can be followed and everything works out. Charred remains of a woman crawling out of the fireplace with claws for hands, screaming and getting ashy footprints on the walls whenever a fire is lit. Stop lighting fires. Easy. Fires are lovely in the winter, but they aren't essential. You can do without. Birds snapping their neck against the nice clean windows at all hours of the day and night. Get rid of the bird feeders. Fewer birds coming to eat means fewer birds sailing into loud and violent suicide missions to scare the bejesus out of everyone on otherwise quiet afternoons. Sure, you might have always dreamed of a lush backyard full of fat chirping birds, but you also dreamed of a backyard free of mangled ant infested bird corpses. Compromises must be made. There are rules. September doesn't have a solution. Thanks to Master Vale down in the basement. Sure, Father Cyrus's blessing made it better, an aspirin to quell a migraine, but the storm of September makes landfall every year like clockwork. These things are cyclical. It starts with the blood and the moaning, which turns into cloddy red waterfalls and screaming. Uh, Angelica arrives, followed by more and more of her little friends, broken, devastated bodies of children darting around the house, pointing at the basement. That said, it isn't all difficult. There are nice times, times when everyone is calm and September is months away. Those times are almost enough to make you think you've done it. Finally made the house half decent place to live with no screaming or bleeding walls or massacred children. Of course, nothing lasts forever. September is always right around the corner, exactly as planned. Still, if the rules are followed, the nice times can be even nicer. But then there's the basement. There is really just one rule for the basement. Don't go down there. Make sure the Bible pages stay taped to the back of the door. No gaps visible. Keep the door closed. Board it up at all times. Do not open the door. Not even a crack. And definitely not in September. These rules, they keep things in order. They make life bearable. You will find that everything, even the apparently unbearable things, can be bearable to some degree. It's all how you handle them, the perspective you take, how quickly you can learn to do and what not to do and act accordingly. There are rules to these things. Everything is survivable, even this. So she's in an abusive relationship with this house. <laughs> like, that is the description of an abusive relationship. Of Like, no, no, yeah. listen, as long as I don't wake him up after he's been drinking, mm-hmm. as long as it's not during football season, as long as it's not during the playoffs, yeah, as long as it's not the night before the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. This is a crazy... Oh my God! This is like it. It went. It went from cute. That was actually the most disturbing thing you've told me so far. The entire yeah. thing, because mm-hmm. she's clearly has coping mechanisms to handle all these different things. Yeah, and they're they're disturbing. Mm-hmm. So the next morning, she wakes up and her daughter is already gone. She went to the police station to file a missing persons okay. report. Uh, when she returns, she's of course screaming as soon as she walks in the door about small town police. They're bullshit. Grown men are apparently just allowed to leave. Um, when she lets her mom know the police are coming by the house tomorrow to do an interview, Margaret is extremely upset. She doesn't want the cops coming around uh, for a multitude of reasons. Yeah, It's hard to explain all that blood to cops. Yeah. Um, 
Catherine heads back up to her dad's office to try to open the cabinets and drawers. And she asks her mom if she always kept them locked. And she's like, I don't know. Um, unlike Elias, I only had to be told once to stay out of his office. Oh. So eventually... Um, I don't like that line. Yeah. So eventually Catherine gives up after like some raging and leaves the office again. They have a crowbar. Yeah, but I mean, ornate, beautiful wood. I know, but I'm just saying, <laughs> I got a crowbar. Like So uh, I think they're like, they're going around the house, whatever. And Catherine finds another pot of tea on the stove and admonishes her mom again... Yeah. For to be more careful. She also finds a crowbar on the kitchen counter and returns to Hal's office. There we go. <laughs> Margaret. Here's the thing I don't like about that crowbar, though. What? That crowbar's just floating around. Right? Why was it in the kitchen? Yeah. But also like that crowbar's just floating around uh-huh. by the door that's boarded up. Yeah. I don't like that. No. This is definitely check off crowbar. Yeah. Actually, I think there's a note I forgot to put in here. So, Okay. In September, the whole house is going crazy, right? Yeah, and it's trying to get everyone to go into the basement. Everybody's trying to go in the basement. Everybody's going crazy. Frederica goes a specific type of crazy. So whereas like the little pranksters are behaving poorly and the blood and the yelling, Frederica specifically just has like this rolling anxiety attack where she's kind of running around rage cleaning the whole house. Yeah. But she's mismanaging it. So she leaves things in the wrong places. So like she'll fill up the utensil drawer with socks yeah. or she's taken all the couches and move them to the middle of the room in a pile. Like she's cleaning, but she's making really weird mistakes because she's so panicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure that the crowbar is in there because she like meant to put it somewhere else, but in her mind she just left it in the kitchen. No, I don't think so. I understand that, but I didn't. I need to tell you about the Frederick. No, that's fine. That's I, I. I completely understand that. Um, I think there's a sub a subconscious ghost part of her that wants to use the new person to open the basement door. Ooh. Okay. All right. So when she. She heads back with the crowbar, right? Mm-hmm. Um, she's She starts ripping the, the doors and the cabinets and the drawers open with the crowbar. Uh, Marge is freaking out because, again, beautiful, beautiful wood. <laughs> Just like ornate, beautiful wood. And it's cracking and she's ripping open. She gets one of the cabinets open and it's filled to the top, to the brim, with empty Jack Daniels bottles. And then she looks at her mom and she's like did you know and her mom was just like i had no idea like he was in his office every night he was working on his new novel in quotes he told me to leave her alone leave him alone so i did um and they open every cabinet it's all just filled with empty liquor bottles oh many many liquor bottles um suddenly the house is an allegory so she keeps finding more and more liquor bottles yeah and no piss jugs though no piss jugs Hal, good job, Hal. Good on you, Hal. You're better than most. You're better than Asmund Gold. <laughs> so, um, that reference means something a lot to like three people <laughs> who are going to be like, Jesus Christ. Um, as she's going through the cabinets, she finds a cigar box. Okay. And she opens it up and she starts laughing, like that laugh you do when you're going to avoid crying, that yeah. laugh. Um, and Marge is like, What's in the box? And uh, through the tears of laughter, Catherine is like, it's his fucking AA coins. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dork. Ooh. Do you want to take a little break here? A little, a little darkness break? Because we got yeah. a lot of we got a lot of d- deep dark shit happening. That's not about ghost and ooky spookies. <sighs> this whole thing's a fucking metaphor, isn't it? <laughs> all right, let's take a little, quick break. Uh, if you don't want to hear commercials, always remember to join us at uh, patreon.com slash Pearlmania 500. Always look to the show notes for those links. Allegedly. What? Why? I hit an extra. Why did you hit an edge? I hit an extra button. button. I meant to hit this one. <laughs> oh, nice. Air yeah. horns. Can I tell you what I was thinking yeah. during the break? Because we just took an extended break. Had yeah. to give baby a bottle. Yeah, I needed a cup of coffee. I needed a cup of coffee. A lot of different, different stuff happened. Yeah. For the listeners, they're like, that was a quick break. For us, we're like, a lifetime has passed. <laughs> what I was thinking about is with Catherine, the daughter visiting. Yeah. And it's clearly a small town. Uh-huh. This is a Stephen King Hallmark story now. 
Oh. Like I like I guess this would be like if instead of a, a Hallmark Christmas movie, this mm-hmm. is a Hallmark Labor Day movie. Because it's it. in September. It's early September. So she's coming back from the big city. Coming back from the big she's city. She's gonna meet she a has down a, home gal. She has a job that uh-huh. is clearly keeping her busy. Yep. It's clearly keeping her from the family. Mm-hmm. Clearly keeping like her attention is elsewhere. Yep. She needs to be there. She needs to learn the true horror of September. She needs to go find herself a good down home gal, like that one Kristen Stewart movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. That Remember, was a great Christmas movie. Yeah. Exactly. But it's it's not Christmas. Yeah. It's clearly it's, September. It's September. But also, all of the budget for this movie will be put into um, the soundtrack because they will buy "Wake Me Up When September Ends" by Green Day <laughs> from the American Idiot album, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And like that is like the running track. It's her. It's like. My mom, she did, she's not been answering the phone. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! She goes, "Oh no, hold on, Brad. I, I'll no, I'll come back to the city soon, but I have to go out here. I, I understand that the sale of the company is coming up, and we're millions of dollars and jobs are on the line. But I have to visit home. Yeah. Wake me up when September and also real quick, just because I've been thinking about this a lot yeah. with September ends that song in general. That is on the American Idiot album. Yes. And I had to look it up because the American Idiot album was very anti the Iraq war. It was also very, very anti George W. Bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when the song came out, I knew how like every song was very much like fuck George W. Bush. And yeah. we, we're here for it. All right. We love some George W. Bush slander. Every day, all day. Fuck that dude. Fuck Dick Cheney. Forever. All the neocons, right? However, I did not know that the song Wake Me Up When September Ends was about the death of Billy Joe Armstrong's father Mm -hmm. and about him like trying to get through that month. Yeah. And like the combination of that plus like people mourning it was even though it was three years later, like people mourning like the loss of September, like from September 11th, all Mm -hmm. these different things. I always was like, you want us to wake you up when September ends because like October is when we really get going on get out the vote drives, right? And okay. then we're going to get rid of George Bush in 2004. Yeah. I had no idea. You went real analytical on this. You're I like, did. yes, because I we had... need to wake up and we need to get out there. We need to get out there. We need to get out the vote. Yeah. We need to get rid of George W. Bush because he is the American idiot. So yeah. when I finally, when you when I saw the name of this book was The September House, I went and looked up like what the song was about. Like, it's about mourning the loss of a dead one. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> It's not about an election. They're like, no. the rest of the album is about the election. Give the man one personal song. No. Okay. So. I hope you had the time of the your life. The next. Oh, my God. The next day, Margaret wakes up. She's super tired. There was so much screaming and moaning from the house. She did not get a lot of good sleep. It's just the house settling. <laughs> Catherine, on the other hand, well, well rested. Good spirits. Oh. Um, the cops arrive uh, to interview her about her husband's disappearance the first thing they ask about when they walk in the house is about the flies okay. that are buzzing around because there's still big black flies from the priest situation. Oh. And they're just still buzzing about. Um, and so I just thought that was a very funny little moment where like the cops come in. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up with these flies? But also, real quick, this is how you know they're dumb cops. The husband is missing. Uh-huh. And there's a shit ton of flies in the big house. Big fat ones. And the daughter is the one who showed up out of nowhere and contacted the police and stated, I don't live here. I don't know where my dad is. Mm-hmm. Like, we'll come over and interview your mom. Oh, it's almost as if, oh, and the basement's boarded up? Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, interviewing her, they find out the last time she saw him, they had gotten into a big fight, her and Hal. He wanted to leave. Um, he wanted to leave the house, not her. Okay. He actually begged her to leave with him. And we find out more and more about Margaret and Hal's tumultuous relationship um, and how Margaret views Margaret views it as like the natural ups and downs of a relationship where Catherine is like, no, this was this is a fucked up relationship, mom. Like, so like Mar- uh, Catherine is getting mad while Margaret is explaining to the cops because she's like, no, no, you're downplaying everything. And like at a point we find out that um I guess Catherine was sent to live with her with Marge's sister. Mm. So like uh, Catherine left the house and went to live with Margaret's sister, Noel. Um, Aunt Noel. Aunt Noel. Um, so the next day. Th- Aunt Noel from the Hallmark Christmas movie? Oh, my God. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm uh, telling you. <laughs> this whole thing is Hallmark coded. Um. So whatever. The police leave. They do their little interview. They're. Again, they're just like local town cops. They're not really super interested. They're like, yeah, grown men leave marriages. 
Okay, yeah. fine. Um, They're like, I got into this job for the power. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Uh, abuse of yeah so the next day Catherine takes her mom out to visit all the bars in the area because now that Catherine knows her dad uh is off the wagon she's like well we should go check all the bars with this picture and see if anybody knows him or what he's been up to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um so they go out he's been missing for oh, well over a month and yeah. doesn't have his phone nope so i mean he's fine and uh while they're in there uh, now, again, Marge hasn't really left the house. I don't even know if she goes to the grocery store. It's never discussed about yeah. like when she leaves and when she doesn't. But it feels like as she gets further and further away from the house, she like really yearns for the house. Like the house has a hold on her. The house is calling her back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. House is like, yeah. come home. And so like she she goes to the restroom in one of the bars and she sees like writing on the bathroom stalls. And she's like reading this limerick. There's like somebody wrote a limerick, which how long are you sitting there? You're writing limericks. Okay. But it's like all of uh, like she interprets it to be about the house. Okay. And then like she's talking to someone at the bar, one of the bartenders, and she they say something to her, but she hears he's down there. Like everything is like the house calling back to her through other yeah. people. And so you're just like, oh, like she's really haunted by this house. Also, I did not write this note in here because I did. It's not super important to the actual story. Like, cause when I'm writing these little cliff notes after I read this, the book, yeah, I'm trying to like get to the main plot point because it would take a really long time to explain these books if I just like read them to you, right? So when they go to the bars, though, one of the bartenders is like this hot gruff gal, yeah, who's co- totally flirting with Catherine. And it's like this whole subplot. I like feel it, vindicated. I didn't, but like, it's not really important. So I didn't even write about it. It is but the was, story. But no, but like, no, straight. She's... No, I don't want to know any more about this house. <laughs> so Catherine is banging this lesbian bartender now. No, and so, she's learning about getting good down home small town coochie. Um. Okay. So they're not fl- that fast. Not that the, fast city coochie. Um. The down home bartender flirts with her her mom's like that girl seems to like you and and Catherine's like no i'm too busy <laughs> so Aww. but um okay so then but wait i don't even remember what it happens in the book but i do know there's a night where Catherine and marge get into a huge fight yeah. and Catherine storms out and it is uh, i guess uh, it, it's discussed that maybe she went to meet at that it's bar heavily implied it's heavily implied that she went to that bar and got drunk and slept with that bartender yeah but it's not she doesn't Hallmark movie from that point on. Yeah. But that romance in quotes, I needed to tell you now. But yeah. um, so the next day, uh, that day was not successful. Nobody at the bars knew who Hal was, had never seen him before. Blah, blah, blah. Real quick. What are what are some other September holidays besides, I can only think of Labor Day. Okay. So I personally don't think of any holidays in September. September for me is birthday month. Because there are four billion Virgos in my friends and family group. Okay. So I think every September is just birthday after birthday. Because, listen, I'll let you know, a Virgo is going to celebrate their birthday. And they're, you're going to go because they're going to throw in a, a credible party. Well, I pulled up the uh, the Pioneer Woman's website. Okay, and, I don't and know. And these are a lot of bullshit ones. Because they have like National Grandparents Day. The Pioneer uh, Woman? The Walmart Crockpot Lady? Yeah, September 11th I- is Patriot Day. No, that's not what it is. Um, September 13th is Roll Doll Day. I oh, want to take over weird. Pioneer Woman's National um, Celiac Disease Awareness Day. Oh. Maybe this is a Hallmark National Celiac Disease Awareness Day movie. Can I talk more about how I want to steal Pioneer Woman's uh whole, branding? Whole, whole, whole deal. I want I just I want to sell a line of crock pots so bad. Mm. Okay. Anyway. Um Oh, it's the autumnal equinox. Okay. September 23rd. But just the equinox. You don't have to call it autumnal. It's the it's autumnal. It's not a meal. Um, bah, bah, bah. They go to... Th- okay, okay, so then... Um, I don't want to lose my spot. Okay. They go to the bars, and then they go back to the house, and they're at the house, and uh, Angelica is acting up, and Elias is in the corner. <laughs> He's back. Okay? Yeah. Um, Catherine opens the door to the basement, at like a certain point and she's like why do you have bible pages on the interior of this door yeah and 
Marge is kind of just like, uh, like, don't go down there. There's black mold. Like, she just kind of, like, panics. Like, yeah, she's yeah. like, oh, no, no, don't get that. But, like, never explains to her daughter why there's Bible But the pages. boards are down now? The boards are off because when the priest was there. They never put them back? They never put them back. Because, uh, because it was, I think she just forgot. I think she, it was just like, she was like, I got to go dig up Elias's mom. Like, I think she just got overwhelmed with all of things. all the things. So she didn't put the boards back. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking. Um, Margaret is getting increasingly manic, probably because she's not sleeping. Okay, she is not sleeping. Yeah. She's running around when she is awake, trying to clean the blood off the walls, pick up the dead birds, put away stuff Frederica has left in the wrong place. She, she's just manically running around when she's awake because she doesn't want Catherine to see anything. And she ends up walking too close to Elias and gets bit big time. Mm. And she screams really loud. And Catherine comes to find her. And Catherine is freaking out. Like, what the fuck happened? And seeing her arm with these huge gashes, blood everywhere. And she's like, how did you do this? And, like, Catherine is looking around and is like, there's nothing sharp around here. How did you do this? Yeah. And then she's like, mom, did you do this to yourself? Like, did you cut yourself? Um, And... Margaret is like, no, no, no. Like, but Margaret won't explain what happened. Yeah. She's like, no, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Um, and then Catherine's like, we need to find your first aid kit. So she like kind of drags her mom to go to the bathroom to find uh, first aid supplies. And when they get to the bathroom, she opens the bathroom door and the bathroom sink is full of every single kitchen knife because Frederica apparently will put all the kitchen knives in the sink. Okay. <laughs> and Marge audibly says, God damn it, Frederica. And Catherine responds to her, My name is Catherine. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then we're going to have like, uh, we have a quick flashback to last year. Yeah. And um, la- the last year, um, Hal decides he wants to take on Master Vale. So Master Vale is the guy that lives in the basement. Okay. Okay. Um, there's some backstory. It's it takes up a lot of space, but Master Vale used to own the home at a certain point back 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 long ago. Yep. And back when saying calling somebody master was okay. Exactly. Okay. And he is a very evil bad person, and he is maybe this is Texas then. He is the one that uh, killed the children. Okay. okay. So that's what you need to know. Okay. And. He lives in the basement and he terrorizes them. And But like, you, if you don't go to the basement, you really don't have to deal with him. But that's why the kids are always pointing downstairs to go to him. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. he's down there and they want you to like help them with yeah. what's going on. And go stop him or go something. Go stop him, yeah. So I guess the third year they live there, uh, Hal had had enough of his shit and decides he's going to go down the basement. Give him a what for. And get him a what for. But of course he decides he needs to do it in September. And Marge is like, listen, let's do it in October, babes. Yeah. I mean, December. What? Like, let's any month but September. And Hal's like, nope, we got to do it now. We got to do it when he's like the, yeah. the most out of it. So he makes a plan to go into the basement in quotes. Um, And so that she goes down with him because she's like, I'm going to be his backup just in case. Like, she doesn't want to do it, but she's going to do it with him. Yeah. And they go down to the basement together and uh, they're walking towards the darkest furthest corner in the basement and there they see master val and like he is like really thin almost see-through skin with like lesions he's super gross okay yeah. and he's got like crazy smile like ludicrous cheshire cat with rotted teeth smile yeah yeah um creepy stuff creepy stuff and he's got a huge hammer in his hand and there is little angelica alive on the table in front of him Okay. okay, I'm not going to elaborate. It gets way too fucking graphic, and I don't like body horror. Um, so they witness what happens, and Marge immediately is like, nope. And she's, we're noping the fuck out. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. So what happens is, like, they're looking at Mr. Val, and they see it, but it's the, they're... It's like an echo. It's an echo, exactly. Yeah. An echo of the past. And so... She starts running back to the staircase. She's like, I'm going upstairs. I'm, I'm fucking out of here, dude. Yeah. This is the first time she's running away from a situation. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, like, yeah. Okay, Margaret. Um, and <sighs> whereas she is a flight response, he is a freeze response. And Hal is just frozen like a deer in headlights. Okay. So she's yelling at him. So now they're, he finally like snaps into it and starts running with her towards the staircase. Um, but Vale uh, jumps at 
uh, and attacks Hal and is like grabbing him by the leg and pulling him. And he has like these long razor sharp fingers yeah, yeah, yeah. and is like ripping through his leg. Um, and so she ends up like beating him with like a paddle she finds. I think she might have brought down like a pickleball paddle. I don't really understand where this paddle came from. I was picturing it like one of those like fraternity paddles. Yeah, almost. I was going to say it actually might be if he if there's some sort of backstory here. Like the reason he has all these kids is like maybe there was this was like an orphanage or something at some point. Mm. Or maybe this, he was like a teacher or something. Then maybe there was like a paddle because those those fraternity paddles are the same ones that they used to use to do corporal punishment on kids. Yeah. At schools. So maybe she had one just like I don't there was know. one down in the she basement. She finds one. She whacks Master Vale with it. It loosens him, but he's still clawing at him. Maybe it's a ghost paddle. At the time, all of a sudden, at the top of the staircase where the door is open, there's Elias. And he screams his really loud giant mouth scream. And the jet engine noise comes out and scares Val. And Val screams back in his face and uh, like kind of tries to grab for Elias with his huge claw like hand. But Elias bites his hand <laughs> and Val screams and lets go of Hal and then kind of scampers back into the dark corner okay. on like all fours, like super creepy. And then they run upstairs with Elias. Yeah. Um. So the next day when his wounds are cleaned and wrapped, Hal went to went back to his office to work on his novel. And that was last September. So that was the the last time she really talked to him. Because right? after that, he went to his office and just uh, drank heavily just every drank day. Just drank and worked on his novel. And so, like, again, she's like, he left a while ago. Like, gotcha. you know, like, this is when he disappeared from their relationship. Yeah, once he realized that their that their cheap mortgage was uh, built on a base of child torture mm-hmm, in the basement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so That's basically how Walmart works. <laughs> Keep prices down with some child torture. Um, Wait, let's see. So... Okay, so that was like a, 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 a what's it called? Like a retrospect. And yep. I'm going to come back to where we currently are. Mom's arm is bleeding. She, there's a uh, bunch, of, kids bunch knives. of knives in the sink. Yep. Catherine is freaking the fuck out, dude. Um, and so she ends up calling her ex-girlfriend, whose name is Claire. And she calls Claire because I think Claire's new girlfriend is like a therapist. Okay. So she's like, I understand. You have me blocked on Instagram, but I just need to talk to your girlfriend. Fine. Put me on speakerphone. I know this is weird. I'm freaking out. Yeah. So like, it's just like very that. Um, but I, I'm going to read right from the book parts of this phone call because they are really good. I, I couldn't summarize it any better than they're written. So it says, I'm worried she might have lost it. Catherine was saying. We've got a history, you know. Her father, he spent a lot of his time in hospitals. I think he killed himself. I don't know. Mom never talks about it. Maybe she has dementia, Catherine asks. She seems really out of it. She's not remembering things. But isn't she too young for that? Catherine was silent listening. Today was the first time, she said. But there have been signs. Things haven't been right with her since I got here. She keeps calling me different names, people I've never heard of. She's always glancing away like she's seeing something in the corner of the room that isn't really there. I think it's been going on for a while and she's just kept it from me. It might have to do with my dad leaving. She was saying, I can't, I don't have time to get into, oh, she says to her, I can't explain it all. I don't have time to get into their fucked up relationship. Um, But she kind of needed him in a way that didn't make sense she says it got better, but I don't think it actually did. You should see her fucking arms. And now she's gone, and she is not okay. Okay? Okay. So Claire is freaking out. Now, while all this is happening, she's on speakerphone with her ex-girlfriend's new girlfriend, talking about her mom, panicking. Yeah. Um, uh, Marge is sitting at the kitchen island. I've decided there's an island. She's sitting at the kitchen island. Uh, while her daughter's on the phone, she is not paying attention to this phone call. She's like yeah. catching little blips of it, and she's like, "I've told her about my father before." Like, well, like you know, like she's not listening, but she's listening. But while this is happening, the pranksters are in the kitchen and they're surrounding Marge. They're all around her, um, and they're all kind of whispering or ominously screaming, "He's down there! He's down there!" Right? Okay. And um, and so uh, so Catherine apparently is not seeing any of the ghosts. No, she doesn't see any of them. Okay. And she doesn't have the sight. She doesn't have, yeah, she doesn't have the sight. So um because she's too blinded by her work. Right? She just needs to find a nice gal. So Catherine notices that her blo- her mom now has a bloody nose. 
And she's like, Mom, your nose is bleeding. Like The Shining. And Marge is like, Marge doesn't care. She's like, oh, yeah, what, whatever. I'll get it. Like, Because uh, it, it had dripped onto her shirt. And she's like, yeah, it's fine. I know how to get blood out of things. And Catherine's like, why would you say that? Like, <laughs> why would that be the thing you say? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so she sits her mom. To, she's like, mom, sit down. I want to ask you some questions. Because Claire's girlfriend has given her some questions to, like, kind of see where her mom's at. Yeah. It's and a BuzzFeed she, she's quiz. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just Which a, Harry Potter house are you? Yeah. It's a BuzzFeed quiz. How schizophrenic yeah. are you? I think you're a Gryffindor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. From Tumblr, from Tumblr girly to Supernatural fan. Um, so she's like, what day is it? And her mom's like, Tuesday. She's like, it's Friday. And she's like, what's today's date? And her mom's like, the 17th. It's the 25th. Um, so her mom's getting this, all these wrong. And the whole time, her mom is kind of like looking away because all the little pranksters are around her. And Julian appears directly next to her and he screams in her face, he's down there which startles her and she flinches. And then Catherine's like, what is wrong with you? Um, and the pranksters are getting really close and they start touching her. And so every time one of them touches her, she has a flashback to the way that they, they have died. been murdered. Yeah. yeah. So she's just being inundated with murders. Yeah. By the way, you just said it's September 25th, um, which is interesting that they're in the kitchen because uh, September 25th is national cooking day. Oh my god! Do you still have the Pioneer Woman's website up? Yeah, I just I, I have it up here. <laughs> well, because if it had been if it had been September twenty fourth, it would have been uh -huh. National Cherries Jubilee Day. Okay. So or National Daughters Day. I need Inter you to close that page. No, no, but hold on. Okay. What if it was a Hallmark movie uh -huh. about Catherine returning to her haunted, uh, codependent, abused mother, and it's really about International Daughters Day, the Hallmark movie? Okay. Um, okay, so they're getting close. They touch yep. her. Catherine's witnessing this without the seeing the prankster. So her mom looks like like she's having seizures. She's having seizures, and her mom looks like she's going to be sick because again she's feeling all these things. So she looks like she's physically ill. Um, and Catherine's like, "Mom, I think you are sick, and I need to take you to the hospital." And Margaret's like, "I'm not sick, dear." Right? Yeah. I'm going to read you another which quick a, quote. Psycho out quote. of uh, the book. Yeah. Uh, Catherine must have been under the assumption that because my father had spent some time in hospitals, I must need to spend some time in hospital too. That was all a silly misunderstanding though, because the things I was seeing were real. Meanwhile, the boy with no legs was trying to pull himself onto a chair. And let me tell you, that was a sad sight. Angelica had taken up a nonstop whisper into my forehead. He's down there. He's down there. He's down there. So again, we're just really seeing that like, she thinks what's happening is real. Yeah. And Catherine is not seeing it and thinks, obviously, this is insane. Yeah. And there's a history of so this possibly in the family. Yeah. Okay. Um, Angelica's eyeball falls out onto Marge and it startles her so much that she jumps. And when she jumps, she accidentally puts her arm through uh, the boy with no legs and she feels what happens to him and she falls to the ground and starts vomiting. Yeah. Right. Uh, Catherine is now beside her fucking self. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, this looks crazy from Catherine's perspective. This Hallmark movie has taken a turn, yeah. right? And she know as she's like looking at her mom, who's like shaking, convulsing, and vomiting on the floor, she notices that her mom's vomit is filled with big black flies. And she's like, Mom, have you been eating flies? Right? She's like, We're going to the fucking hospital. Like, she's yeah. screaming at this point. Um, at that moment, Catherine's phone rings and it's the police. Um, and they're like, you need to come to the police station immediately. Um, and she looks at her mom. She's like, mom, this is not over. We are going to the hospital. I have to take this call. Right. Like, and yeah. the police are like, you need to come down to the station immediately. And so she's like, mom, I will be back. And we are going to the fucking hospital. You're on the, 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 you're <laughs> on the phone with 911. Just guys. Send yeah, an hey, ambulance. Okay. Yeah. Send an ambulance and a squad car over here. Ambulance. Then. Send one over. Why do I need to come down there? What can't you FaceTime me about? Um, so she leaves and her mom is vomiting flies. <laughs> she leaves. She goes to the cops. Um, Marge at this point, uh, again, why does it feel like Catherine had a close relationship with her dad who she hates? Uh, I don't know. So Marge decides that in the, in the midst of all of this, she just needs to get a few chores done. So she starts pitter pattering about, Oh my God. <laughs> she starts a, a bunch of random haunted house cleaning tasks. Right. 
she's like i gotta clean up the dead birds i'm gonna she's gonna do a bonfire because they, they burn the birds yeah so they don't get ants because get in the house and um she's like I gotta, gotta, keep the, gotta keep the value up yeah she's like i gotta redig up elias's mom he's back um so she's like i gotta call father cyrus again because things are clearly out of control here yeah so she calls the church as one of the things she does um and she gets an answer when she calls she's like oh, i'd like to talk to father cyrus and they're like we're really sorry to inform you that he's passed away oh. and she's like okay well can you send another priest out to help with our yearly exorcism and she's informed that the church no longer takes part in that practice and that father cyrus was actually banned from doing that for years because he had lost some mental capacity and had and they were like listen you're not allowed to do this you have to stop doing this but he was so obsessed with the paranormal that he was just doing it on his own and he had gotten banned like a decade before like he was not supposed to be doing this they were like listen we did not bring up anything else in his backstory, but we were really mad about the exorcisms. Yeah. So, but apparently Father Cyrus had gone rogue years ago and yep. had been in secret exorcisms this whole time. That's amazing. <laughs> so the only reason that the church had found out is because um, his, his friend who had driven him away that time was so concerned because he had gotten so hurt. He like, I guess father was like, listen, I had a fall while I was in the house and he had gotten so hurt. He went to the hospital um, and that's when that his friend confessed to the rest of the church that he had been driving him to these things. And the uh, priest actually died very soon after mm. that fall, which was and, and the, from the, the, the church no. members were like, um, would you take him a secret like priest fight club? <laughs> this man had the shit beat out of him. This is an 82 year old man who is has two black eyes. Yeah. Bugs. Just, just why bugs. does he keep spitting up bugs? He keeps calling him bugs. It's weird. So. After after Catherine um, comes back, Catherine comes back uh, from the police station and she sees her mom who is covered in dirt. Because remember, she went to go dig up Elias's mom again. Just just covered in dirt. It's so funny. She's like, Mom, why are you covered in dirt? But also, sit down. The police have given me some news. But also, hold on. <laughs> it's one of those ones where because we have talks all the time yeah. about when we're speaking to a boomer about like or just a parent in general when you tell them like a specific thing it's like you come back and you're just like why am i parenting two ways here <laughs> i have to parent the child and the and the grandparent yeah. at the same time yeah. no you can't be covered in dirt <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay listen mom i need to talk to you but first we're gonna have a bath yeah <laughs> you're too grumpy you're gonna have a bath and a nap yeah we can have a hot tea later yeah. Okay, so she's like, the police have news. They got new information from the motel that he was staying at. Okay? Oh, so dad did leave. Yeah, dad did leave. I think I must must have missed that part. But when they went to the bars, they also went to motels and with his picture. And they went to one motel where somebody re recognized his picture. And she had called the police and said, this motel recognizes him. My bad for missing that. That's fine. Um, so she's like, they got new information from that motel he was staying at. The person that recognized him said they saw him take a cab. So then they contacted the cab drivers and the cab driver's like, yeah, I did pick him up from the motel. And they're were like, so where did you drive him? And they're like, to his house. Oh. So they drove him home. And that's the moment that Marge sees blue and red flashing lights coming up outside the window up the drive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now there are four cops. In the house. Yeah. Asking a lot of questions. Why are there so many flies? Yeah. The, again, still, so she's vomiting flies. There's flies around. Yeah. Um, this time, they're not as nice and cordial and like blowing her off. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're, they're, uh, what's going on here? Um, they want to know about the last disagreement she had with him, why he wanted to leave the house. Um, we're really in her internal monologue during this, uh, questioning situation she's like she's lying about everything she's she's barely answering because she's not really coherent she's yeah. so stressed out that she's not really there yeah and she's in her internal monologue she's like he wanted to burn down the house and so i told him to leave because he just wanted to burn down the house yeah. and i didn't care if he was here or not so i just told him to leave um but i wasn't gonna let him burn down my beautiful house yeah right? yeah pocket doors um so the last thing he yelled at her um when he was leaving he said i'm getting gasoline matches and i'm ending this i'm going to burn this house to the ground and he left um and she didn't care 
or she was like oblivious because she was just like going about her day like yeah he said that and then he left and she was like yeah sure whatever so the whole time that this is she's having this internal monologue while the one cop the head cop is asking her questions the other three cops are kind of searching around the house looking for stuff they're actually uh detectiving in this moment um and one of them opens up the basement door and marge flinches and she explains like it's dangerous down there don't go down there because there's mold and the cop's like i think i'll survive right i think i think i'll be fine yeah i'm not gonna wear a mask i'm a cop (laughs) so um we got we're back to internal monologue because again all this chaos yeah. is happening around here and we're just hearing her insides um a couple days later after he had stormed out in the middle of the night she heard movement in the house and she knew it was how she knew his f- footsteps and she heard him walking around and she could hear the splashing of liquid and the smell of gasoline filling the house she heard him head to the basement and she braced herself and waited for the smell of smoke she looked around her beautiful room and saw like the moonlight coming in on her beautiful bed her four poster bed yeah her beautiful fireplace and she was just like completely at peace you know so she's if, like, I bur- if i die if i die fire, i'm I die. dying in my beautiful lovely house yeah, right yeah. she didn't care when she woke up the next morning she was surprised ish she was like oh, oh okay didn't sure. die didn't die because she went to sleep thinking i'm gonna die of smoke inhalation That's what a it. 2020s outlook <laughs> Oh, okay. I guess we're doing this again. Wow. Um, She walked through the quiet house and looked at the gasoline on all of her furniture and thought about what a pain it was going to be to clean it all out. Um, And she noticed the basement door was shut and it clearly had been shut really hard because there was a crack down the middle of the door. Okay. So it had been slammed shut or back to reality back. The police officer that was in the basement comes back up and he is white as a ghost. And he says, he's down there. And the cop looks wildly at Marge. My God, woman, what did you do to him? Catherine goes running to see to the downstairs and the cops hold her back. And like, trust me, you do not want to see your father like this. The main officer calls into the radio, a homicide, right? Marge is like, it wasn't me. And everyone, well, who was it then? It was the house. Hal went down there and he shouldn't have. He wanted to fight Mr. Val and he shouldn't have. And the cops are like, who is Miss Master Val? And Marge lets loose and explains everything from the 1800s forward. Master Val, the children, uh, Elias, Frederica, Jasper, Blythe. Like she just was like, da 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 da. Yeah. They're, and they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, and like Catherine is also just like looking her mom wide eyed, like, right? Also, like, maybe keep talking for the insanity plea for the homicide yeah, going yeah, on right yeah, now. Yeah. Um, but Marge is like, okay, listen, you have to ask Edie. She is my next-door neighbor. She knows all about it. I've told her everything. She's She knows. Just go ask my next-door neighbor, Edie. And again, everyone is looking at her, like, puzzled. And Catherine is like, Mom, you don't have a next-door neighbor. The closest house to you is 10 miles away. Okay. So I'm going to read off of this page because it's uh, way better than I could say. Um, Margaret, are you remembering something? People who see things, I said. Do they kill people? I heard Catherine let out a sharp, shaky breath. Not usually, the cop said. But at very extreme circumstances, it's possible. I figured I could consider these circumstances extreme. In my mind's eye, I could see the pranksters fading drifting from the transparent to nearly invisible with no trace left behind it was hard to say if they had ever been there in the first place i looked at the scars on my arm they did closely resemble the scratches hal used to leave on me in those days now that i examined them closely i could see how i couldn't see how they came from teeth people who see things i said do they hurt themselves sometimes the police officer said i looked around the room what i saw was utter disarray in the house was in The cabinets were thrown open from my search for bones, revealing a smattering of random objects that lay inside. The sink was a grimy mess covered in mud and debris. There was dirt everywhere, dark footprints and handprints covering most surfaces. And the flies. God, how I had gotten used to living with the flies. It did not appear to be the kitchen of a woman who was doing well. So 
Okay. Margaret is coming to terms with the fact that like she's had a psychic break. She's had a she is coming out of a psychosis in a moment, and yeah. she's living in squalor. Her house is not beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's destroyed, destroyed, covered in filth and dirt and flies and a mess because of her, you know, chaos running yeah. around. Um, Margaret is arrested right there. They're yeah. really nice about it. Like, yeah, Margaret, put your hands around it. We're gonna take you in. Yeah. Okay. They put the handcuffs on her, and they're walking out, and. The the lead cop is in front and then the rest of them are kind of they're all walking like single file and Catherine grabs her keys and she's going to follow them to the police station in her car behind them. So Catherine's walking behind her mom and the cop that has her by the wrist. Right. Yeah. Um, and they get closer to the door. They're walking and like Catherine is crying. Marge is bewildered. You know, like I can't imagine how terrifying this scenario is yeah. for her. Right. Like she's so scared. She's having a moment of clarity, a moment of clarity in psychosis. Yeah. yeah. And so they're walking out and like it, it's heart wrenching the way it's described. Right. And as they get closer to the door, a faint moaning starts. Um, and it's like it's so light, but it's like a dog whistle to Marge. She hears it. But she is just like, it's in my head. Like, yeah. I am not well. Yeah. I am not well. Um, and so, but she's starting to hear the moaning, uh, start up again. Um, and with moments, the moan is a full belly scream and it's just screaming in her head. Right. Yeah. And Catherine, she looks at Catherine and she, cause she's so heartbroken that like she hears voices and she's so sad. She looks at Catherine and looking at Catherine, she realizes that Catherine hears it too. Okay. And she looks at her mom and goes, mom, are you doing that? Where is that sound coming from? And then the cops look all look panic and they're like, what the hell is that? What is that sound? And so the the one cop, the main cop that had interviewed her had already stepped out the front door. And so then there's three cops inside with Catherine and Marge. And in all of a sudden, the front door slams closed. Right. Uh -oh. The screaming gets really loud. Uh -oh. The front door is locked. Right. So the one main cop, is, the head cop is locked outside and they're they're just hearing this screaming. The cops pull out their guns. Of course they do. <laughs> of course they do. Ah, of course, the first thing they do is they pull out their guns. Oh, no, it's a haunted house. Shoot the house. So um blinds up so then the oh my god um her cuffs like she has the cuffs on they spring off of her and then so the cops point their gun at her and they're like what the fuck are you doing yeah, what the fuck um and then suddenly they hear like this really retching wet noise moving like water over rocks but thick and slow and all of a sudden, they see blood rushing down the wall so fast. It's flooding the house. Blood is flooding the house. A again, Catherine now is screaming. Cops are terrified. I'm pointing guns at walls. Marge, unaffected. Yeah. Marge is like, okay, so guess what? Guess who was not having a psycho psychic break? Guess who might be a little crazy, <laughs> but also, this house is haunted. <laughs> so um wake me up and literally i put a note here that the cops do point their gun at the staircase they point th as the blood's rushing down they point their gun and i'm like you're gonna shoot the blood yeah um uh then they all hear a really loud thud um and it's the cop has been the main cop has been banging on the front door right bah, 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 let me in yeah. bah, bah. but it's not that this is like a room shaking thud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then another. And then another. And then another. That was a good time. I thank you. Timing for that. And so all around the walls and all the windows, Marge just looks at them and goes, it's the birds. And the cops are screaming, what the hell is happening? <laughs> all the moaning is screaming. Blood is flooding. The, there are hundreds of birds flying into the side of the house. Yeah. Um, it is described that the birds are hitting the cop that's outside. Yeah. <laughs> like the movie The Birds. Like yeah. Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Um, all of a sudden, Angelina comes running out of the kitchen into the living room where they are. Um, and like, But she's running like something is chasing her. Like she's not running and like, huzzah! Like she's running to get the fuck out of something. And she scares the shit out of everyone. And again, all three cops point their guns at the little girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They didn't shoot her. But, what? Uh, <laughs> no. Did they learn nothing from Will Smith? Uh, and oh Men in Black? <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> Men in Black. So does nobody remember? Did he uh, get yeah, the whole? I remember. You reminded because he doesn't shoot the aliens. Yeah, he doesn't like, shoot any of the aliens. He shoots little girls. Like she's holding a quantum physics book. That's weird. In this in the city in the middle of the night. What's yeah. she doing? Yeah, suspicious. That guy just has the. That guy just has a uh, has a tissue. He's uh, got a cold. He's got a cold. So all of a sudden, Julian leaps down from the banister. Julian is the little boy that has no legs, and his intestines are hanging out. Yeah. Uh, so he leaps down from the banister. Again, everyone's panicking. Um, then the incredibly loud sound of a jet engine starts. That's that's uh, Elias. Elias yep. is screaming and walking toward forward. Um, and like uh, Marge starts pulling Catherine kind of out of the way because she doesn't want her to get bit because he's walking by them. Yeah. Um, and she tells every she starts yelling at everyone to stay back from Elias, and the cops are just like. You want us to stay back from the one little boy in this situation? They're just like, uh, like aghast that like, oh, this is the moment where you have something to say. And then all of a sudden, while that's happening, Blythe and her charred ass are is crawling down the staircase, yeah, yeah. screaming. And, you know, that's insane. So it's full chaos in the moment. And then it all stops. Complete silence. Everything like no little kids, no more birds, no more screaming. I was going to say they ran out of birds. <laughs> no more birds. Um, so it goes completely silent and the cops are like, what the fuck was that? But before he even finished that word that um, the before he even sh- he could say anything, really, his this guy, this cop that was about to say it. His arm flips back in a very unnatural way and breaks kind of off of his body. Oh. Yep. And so his bones begin to break backwards one by one, like each finger, arm, leg in unnatural directions. Again, like a wonky spider dying. Yeah, like uh, Stranger Things. Sure. Um, then, Remember in the last season of Stranger yeah. Things when people shoot up in the air and then all their bones would break? Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's that. It's that. Um, and then the next cop uh his chest his chest starts to cave in oh uh-huh are and they th- shooting at anything while this happens no they're just screaming they're okay. just screaming so then his chest caves in and then he <laughs> spider dies right um and it's super gross and it's really vividly described and i'm not going to do any of that and the third cop looks at marge it starts shooting at the concept of ideas <laughs> so the third cop looks at marge and is like you need to stop this and he's pointing his gun at marge okay and he's like i'm gonna give you a count and you have three seconds to make this stop and he's like three two one and as he's pulling uh putting his finger on to place pressure on the uh trigger his chest snaps in half and again spider yeah. death Catherine, screaming okay yeah. Catherine. Is lost it at this moment. Yeah. After this, she's like, "I can't believe the interest rate you have." <laughs> After this, the front door swings open. Oh, and great. the main cop comes in and it's like, a witness. Just dead cops everywhere. Dead spider cops. Um, and she's looking around the room, wide eyed, terrified. What the fuck happened? Because she's been outside getting hit by birds. She doesn't know what was going on in here. Um. Oh, the main cop's a lady. Oh, yeah, yeah. You never made that clear. Sorry. I was picturing like an older, balding guy. No, she's like a younger lady. Okay. I uh-huh. was picturing Carl from Aqua Teen Un- Hunger Force as a cop. No, I was picturing her as, um, oh, you didn't, the newest season of True Detective. Uh huh. The Jodie Foster. The, not Jodie Foster, the other cop lady. Okay. That's how I was picturing Because okay. she's like young, but like rugged. Anyway, okay. that's how I pictured it in my head. So Marge turns her head to see. Okay, so door opens. Cop sees everything, immediately gr- puts her hand on her gun. She's like, the fuck is happening in here? Yeah. And Marge turns her head from the cop to look at Catherine. And because the cop is staring at Catherine, but looks terrified. And so Marge is like, what the fuck's wrong with Catherine? And so she turns her head to look. And behind Catherine is Master Vale. Yeah. Who has come up from the basement. And in the sunlight from the door, you can see how sickly and gross, like covered in lesions and boils. His skin is see-through, the yeah, rotted yeah. teeth. It, And this is the first moment Marge is actually scared in this entire book. This yeah. is the moment of fear Marge feel, feels. Uh, vale reaches out and touches Catherine's shoulder, and she faints immediately. He wraps her arms around the body. Catherine screams, and he's laughing as he drags her back into the basement. Um, and slams the door like the door just like slams behind him. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in this moment, Marge isn't like having this like cerebral like 
where am I? What's going on? Type of thing. Like, cause she's been living in a haze for a while. She doesn't know what day it is. She doesn't know what time it is. Like, she just lives in a haze during September. But like in this moment, she becomes immediately alert. Yeah. And Mama Car flipping strength. Exactly. So, and she is like absolutely My fucking baby. not. So she sprints to the door. Um, and the cop is like, Don't you dare. Like, don't run anywhere. And so the main cop, again, the gun is pointing at Marge, and she's like, Don't run anywhere. And then the gun falls to the floor. And the cop is like thrown up into the sky against the wall. And Marge doesn't see what happens. So we don't see what happens. But she just assumes like, oh, I guess that's the end of her. Because she's like, I'm going down the basement to save my daughter. Um, So she goes down there and she she does. She physically fights a veil off of Catherine. It's really gross and scary. Um, She screams at him to get the fuck out of her house. Um, and she's screaming at him there are rules to things and he had broken them and this is a bridge too far and he attacks her and they have a very fucked up physical battle that ends with him like choking her and he's on top of her choking her and she's losing consciousness and while she's losing consciousness she is having visions of how he how he did this to everyone how he found the children uh how he killed elias's mother how how he used to whisper into Jasper's ear every night, putting ideas into his head and how that ended. He saw what he did to Edie because we find out that Edie, the next door neighbor, actually was one of the homeowners, but she just didn't want to tell. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and she saw uh, him hovering over uh, Hal every night, whispering into his uh, ears while he was drunk and passed out um, about the idea to burn down the house, right? Mm. So like, he's the one that's always been making these horrible things happen. Yeah. 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 Um, then well, so like she's dying, she's losing breath. She's witnessing all of this horror. And then there's a deep, sharp crack because Catherine has whacked him with the paddle that she found down there. Yeah. Again, I don't remember where this paddle came from. I'm sure there was a story, but I don't remember it. Um, this knocked him off Marge for a minute, but he was back up quickly and walking towards them, laughing, growling, being super, super creepy. Um, and, and they're both screaming to him to get the fuck out of their house. Um, he has them backed up against the basement wall at this point because he's like lurching towards them and they're just screaming to get the fuck out. Yeah. Leave us alone. The whole thing. But he's an eternal ghost monster. What's his kryptonite? I don't know. So they get, they're up against the wall. Their, their shoulders are against the bricks and they're holding hands and they're just like kind of accepting their fate. And he lunges towards them and his arms are knocked to the side and he falls because somebody knocks his arms and he falls. And it's Frederica. Oh. And she says, I believe ma'am asked you to leave. Oh. She's finally stepping up. Yeah. And he snaps at her like a dog. He's like, ah, right? Tried to bite her. And then Edie appeared. And she's like, you better listen to my friend. Yeah, and yeah. then all of a sudden, jet engine noise. Right? And so all of a sudden, the pranksters are there. Everyone's there. Master Vale is backing away from the ladies and little kids. And... He's he's trying to get up the stairs, right? Because like they're yelling at him. Um, Catherine and Marge are yelling at him. They're like, "Get the fuck out of our house!" Yeah, our house is now haunted by cops now. Yeah, whoa. And so they're he's trying to crawl up the stairs or run up the stairs, and he gets too close to Elias, who bites him on the leg. And we see that when he gets bit, his wound is seeping with thick black liquid that looks like blood but isn't blood. Yeah. Right. It's the same stuff that's coming out of the wall in that one. Yeah. Room. yeah. So they're all screaming. He starts. He gets bit. He's he's bleeding in quotes um, and he's screaming and gooing everywhere. There's a lot to it, but I was just like, we can we can go past a little um, when he gets to the he gets all the way through the house. They're they're following him and yelling to get out, get out, get out. When they get to the patio, he's basically a gross lump of gooey mess. Like he has transformed into like this like Like nothing. Yeah. Um, And Frederica hands Marge the axe that that had been used to cut her head. And so she hands her the axe and is like, ma'am, this is for you. And because that's how she talks to me, ma'am. And uh, Marge cuts off Vale's head with the axe. Um, and then s- immediately a calm sets over the house, like Disney style. All of a sudden birds are chirping, rainbows are out, sunshine, beauty, right? Calm sets over the house. We start to see all the pranksters leaving, little, little ghosts v- just like walking away. Elias and his mom walk away into the woods. Um, then 
all of a sudden head cop turns out didn't die she's alive she's there she's like yo so it turns out your house is haunted huh and you're like yeah blah blah and so basically um that's the end of the story the cop leaves we don't find out what happens after that there's three other dead cops um it's basically hunky dory and the final scene is Catherine and margaret sitting on the rocking chairs on the porch chilling that's the end of the book that's how it ends <laughs> There's three dead cops in the living room. I uh, there's the, the dead dad in the basement. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I still feel like there's a lot to clean up, like literally mm-hmm. clean up. I know we're not cleaning this one up. We cleaned up enough blood on the walls. OK, see, here's the thing. There was a moment. <laughs> OK, wait, can I tell you my thought? Before yeah. you do yours? OK, because you did say at the beginning you said you didn't like the ending. I OK, this book, the ending for me, what you hear the dog barking. Sorry, yeah. y'all. Um, I think there was like an opportunity missed when it comes to horror. So like this, the, the, the amount of fear that you could get from this specific story started when we realized that, um, Margaret might actually have like dementia or Alzheimer's or something of that where like she's lacking capacity in some way. And the true horror of, of that feeling of not knowing what's going on. And like, for me, it kind of would have been, a more interesting ending and way to play upon the story. If she did get arrested, she did go to trial. She did get institutionalized. She is put away somewhere safe where they can rehabilitate her and help her. Right. Cause that's, that's what would happen in that case. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Catherine is now stuck with this fucking house. That she turns has, out actually is haunted. Yeah. So then like, she's like, I got to move in. I got to take, you know, she left her city job. She's not with Claire yeah, yeah, anymore. Yeah. She moves into this house because her mom left her the estate. And now she's walking around. She cleaned the house. And then slowly she starts to realize this house is really fucking haunted. And like, then it's like, I got to get my mom out of institution. This, ha- like she's fighting the pranksters. Like, I think that would have been a really interesting way to take the story is like, if yeah. Catherine would have moved in because, they really thought that she was just like leaving the kettle on. I, I think that that, yeah, I think that would have been a really cool way. I think that with the current framework of the book, that book is what, like 300 pages? Uh, I don't know. I didn't count. Wait, 344. Yeah, 344 pages. That would be like a 600 page book. Then. Yeah. Because, um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like once they gave us the, the whole like, oh, yeah, we got the house cheap and all this other stuff. It's been three years. Like that whole thing, like felt like a little bit almost too much prologue Mm -hmm. i love the idea i love 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 the idea of this haunted house that the lady just wants to keep because it's cute and cheap yeah 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 yeah. i love that idea i I think that concept is really cool um part of me honestly i would love to see this story like (laughs) disneyfied like i want to see the no i want to see like the cute not the adult swim or like the scary version of this. I want yeah. the cute version of this. Yeah. I want the one where it's like, yeah, there's like, there's like, there's a little bit of darkness, but it's yeah. like, there's a thing in the basement. We don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't talk about it. And don't it's like, go yeah, down there. Okay, yeah, there, there's spooky, sp- scary kid ghosts, but like they, we all, they help us with the Easter egg hunt. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think, I think I would like to see the September house in April. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you know, it is bad because like the way she's talking about it of how like what, you know, there's the whole metaphor for abuse. There's oh, a whole yeah. metaphor for, for an alcoholic spouse. There's a whole metaphor for a lifetime of abuse, clearly. Yeah. And uh, generational trauma plus generational uh, mental illness. There's all these things that seems like the story is hinting at. And then the end is like, no, nah, fuck you. It actually is ghost is like. Yeah. It felt like he was really trying to do a really cool trope. Yeah. And it would have been, again, if this had been the 90s, would have been a, a groundbreaking reveal. Yeah. But then, like in the tw- 2000s, that's like, oh, here's, we're going to hint at that, but it's actually just ghosts. Yeah. Is such a, like, 2010. Yeah. That's a 2010 feel, 100%. Yeah. Um, I like it. Yeah. I it think, was very entertaining to read. I hate the ending, though. I really dislike the ending. I really don't like I understand wanting to give her a happy ending and all those different things, but you've explained so much stuff. And I think I also didn't dive deep into like I wanted to give you some of the abuse stuff so you understand that Marg um Margaret was a victim of uh domestic violence yeah. from her husband. Like yeah. that is they talk and about it. And possibly from the, her dad too. From the yeah. way it's implied. Yeah. And so like this is 
this book has a lot of trauma in it. And so you're understanding that she, it, it, her life it is so out of control that she feels in control in this house because yeah. she knows how to handle this house. And once you know how to handle your abuser, it's easier, right? So like there's so much of that in the book and you're, you learn so much about Margaret and you're like, and Kevin, and I was just like, oh my God. And so for the ending, like, yeah, for the ending to just be like, yeah. And then there were uh, three dead police officers and no questions asked. We're and just house still in the basement and ha- we have all these flies. Happily ever after. Yeah. I just think like, yeah, I think there's a, a lot of weirdness there. I think it, um, what was that one Leonardo DiCaprio movie where he's Shutter Island? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it has a Shutter Island feel to it where it's like, is this really happening or is this psychosis? Yeah. Is this, you know, uh, mental illness or something? But like, it, it feels, I just really hate the fact that, you know, there are bodies. We admit that there are bodies. Yeah. There isn't any follow up of like how the cop is helping them cover this up. How. Oh nope, hauntings are real. I guess. Boop yep. a doop a doop. You want tea? I got. I mean, in fairness, I'm a small town cop. I'm outside of a house that got pelted with birds. Yeah. And then I walk in, and all my coworkers look like little dead spiders. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm leaving. And then I see a weird basement monster. Yeah. No, I'm out. Yeah. No, I Bye get peace. it. Listen, I understand the cop accepting it. But the cop still has to explain this no, to I the moved. three cops, dead families. Move to Alaska. Never see me again. No, I know. But I'm saying, though, is <laughs> we have three cops with families, with loved ones. Yeah. There's connections to the community. It's a yeah. small town. Everyone knows. These aren't, like, just three random. Also, like, if it's a small town and everyone knows the house is haunted, like, how did that, not everyone know the house was haunted? Yeah. Like, oh, the old, like, nobody knew. Like, when they went to town, went into motels and bars, like, people didn't know that this yeah. house was haunted. But you also said it was 10 miles from town. So it's, like, yeah. just far enough on the edge of town. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's also why, like, I, again, I feel like this is is definitely not the suburbs. It's got to be some area that's rural. Maybe it says it in here and I just completely missed it. It's fine. It's, anyway, it was a really fun read. A little disappointing at the end. But overall, I love the campiness of a lady just staying in her haunted house and befriending all of the spirits just because it was a beautiful house. Like, I get that. It reminds me of actually in Beetlejuice. Yes, very nice. That's actually the actual end of Beetlejuice (laughs) is them getting along with the ghosts and the ghosts are helping them do things around the house. Like, that is cool. Like, I love that idea. Yeah. I've always loved that idea of like friendly, not even friendly ghosts, but like just, you know. Useful. The, Help us pay the mortgage. Yeah, exactly. Get a job. Yeah. If you're going to be here. Contribute. Contribute. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd say it's still not my favorite okay. of all the books. What What do you think in ranking? Middle? Middle ranking? It would be upper tier. I'd upper say tier? I, I'd say in the, t- the top. I don't know how many we've done. I don't even remember. Anymore. But if, if I was to look at it, I would say it'd be in the top quarter. There was the 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 blood train. Nothing's right? ever going to be blood train. Nothing's going to be blood train. There was the um, the ghost mermaids. ship. The ghost ship is my favorite. Yeah. Uh, there was uh, HIV milk. Yeah, that was pretty. <laughs> that was the last one we did, didn't that it? That was the last one. Oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> AIDS milk. Yeah. I um, okay. No, I think um, I think it's up there. I think it's up there. It's it's. I definitely think positively about the book. I think the ending, the ending, because I guess there's a certain point where they're like, listen, we're just done with this. Yeah. I just need to be, I understand what the author is coming from. It's like, I just need to wrap this up. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, this book is due. Yeah. It's just due. <laughs> no one's going to read past this part anyway. So let's just go ahead and kind of also like the, the killing of master veil, vale, like with, with an ax on like the front porch it just feels weird. Yeah. And it was like, Oh, you, you just had to ban the power of the spirits together. It's like, I feel like you could have done that. Yeah. Fr- like, a year sooner, earlier sooner i feel like i could have gotten that done in one year wouldn't have taken me three yeah i would have been like okay we got to fix we got to get a new fridge a new washer dryer band all the ghosts together to get this main go- yeah, evil to ghost get, out. get the evil ghost out of the basement yeah. it's like you just have things you need to do when you buy a new house yeah new roof all these things no. <laughs> you know like this, <laughs> I hear with that. there's so many things <laughs> so yeah i mean i completely understand i completely understand where they're coming from of not wanting to abandon the house yeah i do understand that <laughs> Um, I think from, from a story, I point, like that this, this story might not work in like the, ni- in like the nineties or early two thousands. Cause people be like, we'll just move. Yeah. But now we're all like, oh no, we stay with the house. Oh, it was a good price. Uh, okay. Well, how much <laughs> they get it for? And what was the APR? They can't. Uh, oh, They're a, stuck a in that mortgage. gaping wound that weeps black blood. Big deal. Honestly, the part that's surprising <laughs> is that this wasn't a rental. <laughs> like. 
it's just like you're calling your landlord um there's a big gaping leak yeah uh, we'll be out in like th- in three weeks yeah not emergency yeah not a- it never gets fixed you get black mold from the weeping wound yeah the wall. Uh, <laughs> i'm not giving you back your security deposit the yeah. walls are bleeding <laughs> no you damaged the wallpaper when you were cleaning all the blood so we're actually going to keep your security deposit um yeah we all noticed that when we were cleaning up we found 15 dead flies um so obviously you have to pay a 750 dollar cleaning fee for those yeah. so we did an exterior review of the property and we found many holes in the walls because of what looks like uh birds had been flying into the side of the walls you're gonna need to repair that also we're keeping a thousand dollars of your security deposit uh you would notice clearly on page seven of your lease there's a no bird feeder policy so uh that's on you (laughs) you're never gonna let that go no i'm never gonna (laughs) let that go we live in an apartment and i during covid and i had a bird feeder and it was the only thing that kept me going i think we talked about yeah and one day just for the listeners one day one day we they sent an all an all apartment tenant email email to the thousand apartments to let everybody know that you were no longer allowed to have bird feeders I mean, I get it because of mice and shit like that. Like, yeah. I do understand it, but fuck you. Yeah, but it was the only it was joy COVID. we had that moment. I would have this one cardinal that would come by, <laughs> and I would just look at him every day. And, and then like, we're like, we're just breaking the rules. We're feeding them yeah. birds anyway. We were in the back. So anyway, thank you so much for letting me tell you about this book. You're welcome. And now we are going to thank our Patreons it's- who have made it this deep into this very long episode. I hope you did. I hope you drove to work. Listen in one end. And I then hope the way you back. quit your job and drove even further. <laughs> You're like, I want to get out of the car, but you know what? Fuck these people. Yeah. Uh, but when we come back, we will thank all of our new Patreons. Pearl mania, Pearl mania, Pearl mania, Pearl mania. Five hundred dot net is how you can join our Patreon. Uh, and we have a thir- 12, 12 new Patreons this week. Are you ready for it, Mrs. Pig? Yeah, let's go. Uh, up first, we have Cassie Pace. Hey, hon. Uh, after Cassie, we have H075H07. Huh. Okay. Hey, hon. That might stand for something. Hot shot. Oh, that's hot shot. That's le- hot shot, yeah. Leet speak for hot shot. Took me a minute. Uh, after that, we have a nice little underscore attack here. A underscore court underscore of underscore fanatics underscore and underscore gritty underscore under underscore score <laughs> underscore. What's up with the fanatics mom? Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, in canon, the fanatics mom does come to game sometimes. Yep. And uh, she has assaulted She's me. She's from the Galapagos Islands and uh, she'll fight you. Yeah. And she has assaulted me. Yeah, of course. Uh, she has gripped me up. Well. Um, yeah. I did not ask to be smooched by an old grandma. Because she, she has like a wig on and everything, yeah. too. She'll be at the Mother's Day games. Uh, after that, we have Baby Blue. Hey, hon. After that, we have Kelly Fisher. Hey, hon. After that, we have FC. Oh, hey, hon. Uh, after that, uh, this person actually told me that their name is a riddle. Oh, okay. Uh, the riddle is uh, 30 cows in a field. And the full riddle is okay. 30 cows in a field, 28 chickens. How many didn't? How many didn't? Yep. 30 cows in a field, 28 chickens. How many didn't? I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. Hey, hon. 10. 10? The answer's 10. Why? 30 cows in a field, 28 chickens. Oh, 28 the chickens? Yeah. That, I had to Google it. Oh, okay. <laughs> the answer was 10, and I was like, what? Cows and then people, chickens. some people were arguing... That thirty meant something extra, like that. It's a it's a wordplay thing. No, get out. This here. is one of those ones though, where it's like, when you read it, it doesn't make sense. Whenever if I, somebody, if, if, if an ever, old man said it to me, I'd be like, whatever. If I ever find myself um, at a bridge with a troll asking riddles, I will never make it across the bridge. I do not. I'm not good at them. You know, what I would do if no. I got made to a bridge and there was a troll. Push him in the water and walk I'd, over. I'd block him. Oh my god. Actually, even worse. You know what? I would restrict him. You mute him. I would just mute him on Instagram. Oh, no. That way he thinks people are seeing his comments, and he's just wondering why he's not getting any engagement anymore. Dang. That restrict button on Instagram? Mm. <laughs> Tasty. Let me tell you, that's my new favorite. Anyway. After hey, 30 Cows in a Field, we have James the Last. Hey, hon. I like that name. James yeah, the Last. The Last. After that, we have Sandra Maroney. Hey, hon. After that, we have Courtney F. Hey, hon. And this person's a returning member. Okay. Uh, so I'm actually glad they messaged us or else I wouldn't have seen that they were returning. Oh, welcome back. Because uh, they wrote in that they really want me to read this horny fairy book. 
Uh, of course. Um, and they've changed their name, though. Okay. Uh, that's why they're getting a shout out, because I love this name so much. Let's give a big shout out to Patrick underscore Nagels underscore 1980s underscore porn underscore tree. <laughs> Patrick hey, Nagels 1980s porn tree. Hey, hun. And lastly. Okay. For new. All right. You're going to love this one. I'm excited. Gritties underscore baby underscore daddy underscore fishbine. Fishbine, baby. Let's go. Taking down the quacks one one I quack at a time. Love it so much. Gritty we, is the way that I picture fishbine. Just ready to fight. Just ready to go. Take the quacks out. Yeah. But with that. Hey, um, let's meet our team leader. We just met all of our team leaders for this week. Thank you guys so much for supporting us yep. and helping us meet our goals so that we can force Alex to read a book, specifically the second book of A Court in Thorn and Roses. Yep. We are for getting, the horniest of fairies. We are getting very, very close to this uh, to this goal, and we thank everybody for it. Uh, thank you guys so much to everybody who has continued to follow us across all of our social media platforms. Pearl yeah. Mania 500 for Find myself. Find us on Instagram. Mrs. Find the YouTube channel. Mrs. Join the Patreon. 500. Do it all because TikTok's not going to exist soon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> listen. We're not going to get into it. We're not going to get into it. Find us on Instagram. But please. Promania uh, 500 and Mrs. Promania 500. And we can tell you where to find us or other places yeah. as social media gets further and further geo-locked. Uh, also, uh, get your library card, guys. Yeah. This is I, I usually say it in the front end, but I'm going to say in the back end. Yeah. Join your local library. Get a library card. Use the Libby app to get free audiobooks and free um, Kindle style books. Yep. And support your local library. Yeah. And uh, and that last thing, parting words for this episode uh, to everyone out there. Thank you so much for your continued support. Uh, just even if all you do is listen, we appreciate it so much. Every time we see how many people are enjoying this podcast, yeah, we are always shocked and amazed. In it all, all the time. That uh, this stupid little thing we do <laughs> is made brought so much joy to so many people. Yeah, so that makes we're us happy feel really to good. help you get through your day. We love it. And I'm glad I spent this Sunday morning waking up to this <laughs> the September house. The September house, the <laughs> ultimate Hallmark Labor Day movie. Too many frauds and too many scammers that we wish weren't real. Too many cons and too many spammers and we're starting to feel like we got too many tabs open. Too many tabs. Remember to smile.